Hey everybody, today we're debating whether or not Islam is true and we are starting right now. With Perfect Dawah's opening statement, thanks so much for being with us. Perfect Dawah, the floor is all yours. Hello and thank you very much, uh, James and Aaron, for this opportunity. <clears throat> uh, it is almost impossible for some people to accept any proof about existence of God. Not even miracles are sufficient for them. Quran chapter 54 verse 2. Yet whenever they see a sign, they turn away saying, same old magic. But for some people, the minimum evidence is enough to believe. At the age of 25, I started to think God, about God's existence. Because I had little knowledge, within a few days, I decided that God doesn't exist. Not because there were no evidences, but because I didn't have the right knowledge to see them. Some years later, I learned that definitely there is an end to this universe and the life we know will end. I knew that Abrahamic religions believe that one day the world will end. But I learned that pagans believe in reincarnation, which goes on forever, despite according science ever doesn't exist. Only this woke me up, <clears throat> that if all religions are man-made, then they all should be the same. But Abrahamic religions are totally different. I learned that pagans from Mayans to ancient Greeks and Egyptians and other polytheist uh, religions have no any connection uh, connections. And the only similarities they have is that they have hundreds of gods or even millions. But Abrahamic religions have one source despite hundreds of years different in time and thousands of kilometers away from each others. Thousands of years ago, all of them said that one day the world will end. This was a great evidence for me, which I believe that they got this <clears throat> knowledge from a higher power. When I put this beside many other scientific facts mentioned in Quran, then I absolutely cannot deny the facts. Quran chapter 21, verse 104. The day when we will fold the heaven like the folding of a written sheet for the records as we began the first creation, so we shall do it all over again. That is a promise binding upon us. Indeed, we will do it. In this verse, Allah talks about how the world will end, as there are three possible ways, the big chill, the big grief, and the big crunch. From these three possible ways, Allah says the world will end through the big crunch. When he says, we will fold the heaven like the folding of a written sheet, so we shall do it all over again. And Allah even tells us, that there was a beginning for this universe when he says, as we began the first creation. <clears throat> Quran chapter 21, verse 30. Have those who are kafir not considered that the heavens and the earth were a joint entity, and we separated them and made from water every living thing, uh, then will they not believe? Today we know that the universe was a joint entity and the Big Bang separated everything. But Allah told us this 1400 years ago. And he even told us that every living creature on this planet has been created from water, something that we didn't know in the past. Quran chapter 27, verse 64. Is he who begins creation and then repeats it and who provides for you from the heaven and earth? Is there a deity with Allah? Say, produce your proof if you should be truthful. Once again, Allah tells us that there was a beginning which started by a big bang and uh, the world will end through the big crunch when he says he will repeat the creation. There are many more verses to add, but as I said, for someone, only one fact is enough, and for some, not even the biggest miracle is enough. 1400 years ago, in Arabia, the greatest knowledge was only reading and writing. Prophet Muhammad didn't even have that, uh, that knowledge. Talking about universe was absolutely out of question for him, especially being correct. 
After all these facts, I don't follow God just because he exists, but because of his message that has changed our world to a better world and will change it to a perfect world in the future. His guidance will guide us to a world without war, prostitution, drugs, corruptions, killings, and any bad deeds. A world filled with love and equality. Thank you very much. That was my opening. Thank you very much for that opening. <clears throat> Two seconds. I'm going to unmute myself on mute or Zoom. Thank you very much for that opening. And with that, we are going to kick it over to Aaron for his opening as well. But before we do, I want to say first, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, we are a neutral platform welcoming everybody, whether you be atheist, Muslim, Christian, you name it. We're glad that you are here. And also want to say, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button as we have many big debates and discussions coming up. For example, at the bottom right of your screen, Daniel Hakikachu and Inspiring Philosophy's Mike Jones have agreed to debate. That's coming up on Modern Day Debate. You don't want to miss it, so hit that subscribe button. And with that, thank you very much. Aaron Ra, the floor is all yours for your opening as well. All right, well, Islam true. Is Islam true? Huh. As I always say, and I always say this, the truth is what the facts are, what we can show to be true, not whatever else we might assume or imagine beyond or instead of that. And while there are many things that may be true that we don't yet know, we can't say that they are true until we know if they are true. And we can't honestly call it true if I... <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. We cannot honestly show it, call it true if we cannot show the truth of it. And no religion can do that because there is no truth to any of them. If you can't show it, you don't know it. And you shouldn't pretend that you do. But religion is not and does not like the truth. They would rather make believe something else instead. Every religion is its own set of lies, and Islam is just newer lies based on older lies. As Abraham Lincoln said, it is an established maxim in morals that he who makes an assertion without knowing whether it is true or false is guilty of falsehood, and the accidental truth of the assertion does not justify or excuse him. So we know that it is dishonest to assert baseless speculation as if it was a matter of fact, yet that is what all religions do, and the Quran does that all through every surah. Religion is literally make-believe. Faith is all about pretending to know what no one even can know, trying to make believe things that are not evidently true. And religious apologetics is all about making up excuses to keep as, whatever excuses necessary to keep believing what we already know is not true, but that you're determined to believe it anyway. I was baptized Mormon, and my family expected me to grow up Mormon. And when they wanted me to read their scriptures, they couldn't understand when I told them that the Book of Mormon is based on the Bible. So if the Bible is wrong, if Christianity is wrong, then Mormons are wrong too, and, they, and they're, if they're repeating the same claims, and the same goes for Islam. And one of the advantages that Joseph Smith had over Muhammad was that in the 19th century, people had a much better understanding of the planets and how the Earth relates to the rest of the cosmos. And Smith was much like the 20th century science fiction writer L. Ron Hubbard. They were two men who just made up their own religion fraudulently. And they both, they both included contemporary concepts of science fiction. Muhammad didn't have that back in the 7th century, and he wasn't that imaginative either. All he did was take existing elements of Aryan Christianity and blended that with Arabian cultural traditions. And the Quran even admits that Muhammad was not well learned, but he still had some knowledge of Greek scholars like Galen and so on. And when he referenced their work in the Quran, he included their mistakes as well, because he had no idea they were an error. And there were some other learned men back then who knew better than Muhammad did about biology and astronomy and so on, but he didn't know about them. His sources were already out of date by the time he made up that religion. And those are not the only errors he included either. Uh, for example, the Bible describes the earth as flat, as if the sun and the moon both orbit our disk world within the expanse of a giant crystal dome. And this was a common idea in ancient times from the Near East to the Far East. And the Bible repeats this mistake, this laughable mistake a few times, even pretending to quote God describing the earth as flat. Muhammad had a chance to correct that, but he didn't even know that it was a problem. So rather than fix this embarrassing error, Muhammad merely repeated the mistake, saying all sorts of silly things about the sun and the moon and how they're both the same size, both smaller than the earth, and they both orbit around the sun and or they both orbit around the earth and so on. The Bible says that the dome over the flat earth is solid, crystalline, with a mirror finish, looking like molten glass, into which 
God put all the stars and such. And the Quran repeats that mistake, too, and somehow makes it even worse, because in the Quran, the stars are just lanterns stuck in the sky, that in the solid sky, that the angels can use as projectile weapons to defend against genies when they get too close to the roof of this dome, which is supposed to be where God's heavenly hotel is supposed to be. And the Bible says that God fashioned and shaped this bowl to stretch out the heavens like a tent, and Muhammad repeated that error, too. And modern Muslim apologists have tried to twist that into two different references. If it was as if it was supposed to refer to cosmic inflation, which we know it was never intended and still doesn't work. Imagine for a moment that God exists and created the universe as we perceive it today. And he knew how primitive people had always gotten it wrong until then. And he could have written an explanation of the world that, that the world that we walk on is like a floating bubble or a raindrop falling eternal with no end in either direction. And that, there were, and, and that there are many other bubbles or drops besides this one. And people would have understood that even back then. The information would have been accurate, even if it wasn't intuitive at the time. And its truth would have been borne out much better than what God allegedly said instead. Because Muslim apologists expect us to believe that God wrote the Quran conforming to the old and false notion of a firmament, knowing not only how that would be un how that would not be understood correctly back then, but knowing how it would have been understood incorrectly, wrongly, misleading so many for centuries, and how that description given then still cannot be reconciled with Big Bang cosmology today. Because we know what the scripture says and why it said that, because Muhammad didn't know any better. And when I speak of Muhammad, I'm really only referring to whoever or whatever collective cobbled together the Quran or, and the myriad interpretations in the Hadiths. I'm told that no one even knows how many Hadiths there are, but they're treated as authoritative, just like the rabbis in the Torah were considered authorities, even though none of those people in either religion had any idea how to know what they were talking about, and it shows. And much of Christianity, on which Islam is based, was literally dreamt up by mystics who could not distinguish fantasy from reality. That's how religion was invented. We know and can show that the global flood of Noah's Ark never happened, yet the Quran says it did several times. It even says that everyone alive now is necessarily a descendant of Noah. The mere fallible people who compiled the Quran, because it was obviously a collective effort, clearly not dictation given by God, those superstitious believers in mysticism were raised to revere folklore that we can now prove to be nothing more than fairy tales. We know for certain that Adam and Eve were just characters in a fable with no truth in it. That prior to the Hebrew myth of creation, both of those characters already existed in Mesopotamian mythos, and that they were adapted to Jewish tradition and adopted by Muslims as well, but there was never any truth to that story. This may come as a surprise to some people in the audience, but snakes can't talk. Nor could, nor could there be any truth to that story. And we know this. It is childish and inane to even attempt to argue otherwise. But it's not just that the Quran is wrong about practically everything it says about science, about cosmology, biology, even about history. It's so wrong that it would still be morally wrong, even if it was factually accurate. There's so much wrong with it, and I know we'll get to a lot of that later in this debate. But for right now, let's look at the worst of it, the notion of hell for the unbeliever. The empty threat of a fate worse than death that is repeated in almost every surah of the Quran. If there really was a God and he was a righteous judge, something worthy of worship, then there could not be a hell because that ultimate injustice contradicts everything we're told that God is supposed to stand for. The only reason hell exists as a concept in Christianity or Islam is to extort support from the gullible rubes through fear by which the leaders of the clergy can assume financial and political power. The problem is that it doesn't matter how good you are. You could dictate, you could dedicate your life to God and live as a charitable renunciate, forsaking all of the pleasures of the flesh and never enjoy life at all, expecting God to reward you after you die. But if you're Christian and you think Jesus is God or that he is the son of God, then you're going to Muslim hell. And if you're Muslim, then you're going to Christian hell because you didn't accept the trinity of divinity. Either version of God is equally wrong and immoral and a very poor judge. Fortunately, there is no God, so he literally does not give a damn. 
You got it. Thank you very much for that opening as well, Aaron. And want to go into the open dialogue, folks. Want to let you know we'll have Q&A after the open discussion. So if you happen to have a question, feel free to tag me in the live chat with at Modern Day Debate. Or if you ask via Super Chat, those go to the top of the list. And with that, thank you very much, Perfect Awa and Aaron. The floor is all yours for open dialogue. All right, I just uh, I would like to say as well that um, I go live after this uh, debate. And um, I would like to say, uh, as I said, uh, the, for some people, uh, even the biggest miracle is not enough, okay? And um, I would like to ask Aaron, do you know, uh, Aaron, uh, about the three possible ways that the world will end, the big uh, chill, the big... Um, crunch and the big uh, uh, reap. Do you know anything about those that? are three of the those are three of many possibilities, okay. none well, of so which far, are relevant, by the way, to yeah, your okay. argument. All right. But the, so far it's three, not many. I haven't heard any other than these three. OK, well, there's nuclear but, devastation. That's one. Uh, and then, you know, the ending of the world from our perspective uh, is, is certainly plausible where life will continue after our species has extinguished itself. I'm not talking about uh, our planet. I'm talking about the entire universe. There are three possible ways that how the world will end the universe. Okay, well, I'm, okay. I'm only aware of two then because Big Crunch has been pretty much eliminated. Okay. But but the, uh, I know that the, the Big Bang okay. is not a beginning of the universe. Okay. That uh, I've, I've talked to a number of cosmologists about this. That they, they believe that the universe is eternal in either direction. And so okay. there is... You, know, you, you can have an argument that maybe there could be heat death, but then right. uh, some cosmologists like uh, Sean Carroll, for example, argues that, uh, that there, there's a, just a changing state. And even the possibility that uh, gravity becomes a, a repellent force rather than an attractive force. And I don't, I'm not, I don't do cosmology because, as I okay. said, it's irrelevant to this discussion. Yeah. It has nothing yeah. to do with whether there's a God or not. And we're not arguing about whether there's a God or not anyway. Okay. The point of this debate is, is Islam true? Okay. Uh, no. And and there's nothing the Quran says that's factually accurate or okay. morally true. Right. There's nothing true about it. So if we can stick to the topic. Then... Okay, yeah. The topic is that the evidence that uh, which I presented that Quran wait, wait, talks no, you about. Yeah. So <laughs> Listen I said to that. your opening argument. No, I you said, said that. You said somebody told you the world was going to end someday and right. you mistook that for evidence. Okay, uh, the, I said that that's uh, when Quran talks about uh, the repeating the, the universe, okay, and folding it first like a written sheet, okay. He's, Quran is talking about, uh, you know, the, the big chill, or it's known as well as the pulsing theory, okay. Before I see these, uh, before I see these verses of Quran, uh, I believe in that, uh, you know, theory that uh, the, the, because I believe that God has er, existed, existed forever and will exist forever. So he couldn't just decide to create the universe 15 billion years ago. So it must have been done in the past forever and in the future uh, will continue to happen again and again until I saw these many verses of Quran that Allah says that he will repeat it again, okay? And that made me uh, believe that, yes, uh, the big crunch or the pulsing theory is the correct theory, okay? So okay, uh, I'm, I'm sorry that you misunderstood both cosmology uh, and your own theology, because what the Quran actually talks about is a day of judgment where on this planet, on this physical planet, Okay. That there's supposed to be an eclipse of the sun and the moon because the the Quran gets those confused too. But it but it says that when these signs happen and the day of judgment comes, then our physical bodies will be reanimated and crawl out of our physical graves to go to a physical location in the physical dome of the of the non-existent firmament, where we're going to all live forever in God's uh, eternal hotel in the expanse of this firmament, which means that the physical earth must continue to exist. For us to be sitting in this physical realm. Otherwise, okay. nothing in the Quran says about the judgment, the, the day of judgment, or our eternity thereafter in this in this abode makes any sense. If the universe comes to an end, then so does this planet, and so does the the, the, what, the, the Quran says, sky. Yeah, where Quran says that it is on this planet. 
I, I haven't seen that such a verse. That oh, yes, the, you have. The, the, it's all the, over the, the Quran. Just go back and read no, no. it again. I can help you. I've got a, I've got a third book verse. coming out about this. An infidel yeah. reads the Quran. I can point out the verses to you. I, sh I wish yeah. I could have had it compiled yeah. before this debate, yeah, because but I'm I too busy with other things. Yes, yes. I have all the notes. I just don't have it all assembled yet. Yeah. I so haven't it does seen talk. Such a it does talk about our physical bodies crawling out of physical graves, which means on this planet. Because okay. for whatever reason... Muhammad didn't go the route that other religions did. They all confused the idea that we have to breathe air in and out. Everybody else thought that that was a spirit, that air was spirit. And when they saw dust devils, they thought they were literally devils. So they thought they thought that air and the movement of air was divine or spiritual. But Muhammad didn't. And so that you, you have this invisible soul that like looks just like you that comes out of your body when you die. But that's not how Muhammad envisioned it. He just he envisioned our actual physical bodies coming back to life like zombies that would be. And the Quran even says this, that our bodies will be reinvigorated. They'll be recharged back to our youthful living selves our vital selves the way we were before. And then we still have to eat. And we still have to drink, and we still have houses where we need shelter, even in heaven, where we will continue to have sex. That's so, uh, so yeah, it's a continuation yes, okay. of the physical world, and it all happens on this planet because Muhammad didn't know there were other planets. No, no, that's not on this planet, that's uh, in heaven, and heaven is uh, in another dimension, okay? So, and that's uh, the way, no, uh, it Quran isn't. And no, the Quran is, is explicit this is, about this yeah, over this and is, over again. Okay, yes. Heaven, it, the heavens, the sky, the dome yeah. of the firmament, this is the place where they put all the lights that are the stars, but they're not stars in the Quran. The, 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 instead of, because the, Muhammad didn't know what stars are, he said they were lights that the angels could use as projectile weapons to lob against genies when they get too close. And that that's yeah. why we see what we call shooting stars, meteors. He didn't know what those are. He thought those were angels waging war and shooting at at devils. No, that's, uh, look, uh, Aaron, I said that this is what all Muslims believe, okay? I don't know from where you have gotten it. that The, the Quran, and, read it. No, no. It's that, full that, of nonsense this like is that. All, this is all what all Muslims believe, that heaven and hell is on another side, okay? We talk about Another side is not on this planet Earth, okay? So, okay, and then that's, you said that's not about what the Quran and, says. And then you said hell for disbeliever. No, there is nothing uh, in Quran that uh, sent disbelievers to hell. Okay, that's the. Kufar. There's every surah. There's every surah except for the for two or three of the ones that are, uh, amount to only one sentence. Otherwise, every surah over and really? over again. That's all the damn book says yeah. is believe or else you go to hell. That's it. Yeah. Over and no. over again. No, it doesn't say. Okay, give me. It a always says that. It almost only it's a says. Kaffer. It's a coffer. Okay, it's a coffer. <laughs> coffer is not disbeliever, Aaron. Okay, I can give you now the verses because you don't have the verses. Okay, I, uh, I don't need the verses. There's too no, many. No, you need. You have to. The give, entire. Com it's the no, whole you, book. No, you have to come with the evidences, uh, Aaron. You cannot just. I say, have uh, evidence, by the way. By evidence, evidence okay. is not evidences. It's just evidence. Okay. It's a collective. Okay. It's already in plural. Okay. And the evidence I already gave was that almost every surah says this that you say it never says. Give me one surah that says that these believers go to hell. Give me one surah. Very first one, the way that okay. it is currently written right. right now, the the, the book, the, the way that they, they put it, everything out of order, the way that it is commonly published, very first surah starts out, believe the Quran or else you go to hell. Every okay. surah thereafter, except for a couple that are only okay. you know, two or three yeah, sentences, they all say that. No, it says that, look, it's a, about kafir, okay, kuf. It says, chapter 16, verse 83 says, they recognize the favor of Allah, then they deny it. And most of them are kafir. This is talking about disbelievers and saying most of right. them are kafir, not all of them, okay? So there are many, many verses in Quran I can put for you that Allah is talking about those who commit kuf, okay? And committing kuf can be by Muslims, can be by non-Muslims, okay? Quran Look, I will give you, I will give you that one of the injustices of, of the many injustices in the Quran is that it says that even if you're a believer, you can still go to hell, but the unbelievers definitely go to hell. No, there's not, not an that. option okay. where, there you is can, no. where you cannot oh. be, where you can be an unbeliever yes. and not go to hell. There's, okay. there's oh. no option for somebody like me, for an atheist. There's no offer, there's no offer or option for the most charitable, good-natured, kind-hearted, 
person ever, if they don't believe the nonsense sold to them by Muhammad and clan, they're going to hell. And that the Quran is explicit about that repeatedly throughout. Okay. You said that Christians go to, to hell, yeah? Uh, Christians uh, say that they're going to go to hell for the unbeliever. And according no, to the way yeah. that they have it, if you okay. if the only sin that will not be forgiven, it doesn't matter how, how evil you are, every sin can be forgiven if you but believe and ask for forgiveness. Oh. But the only sin that will not be forgiven is the sin of disbelief. Okay. Now, Chapter Islam is slightly different. Yeah. In that yeah. believers can still go to hell yeah. because these, you still have to mind your P's and Q's after that. If you're Christian, you can you can if you love sin, be a Christian because you can sin all you want to and just be forgiven for it. But the Muslims don't have that same loophole. All right, but you said that Christians go to uh, to Muslims' hell. Chapter three, verse one hundred thirteen. Not all of them are alike. The people of the book are a per, uh, per, uh, sorry of the people of the book are a person that stand for the right. They uh, rehearse the verses of God all night long, and they prostrate themselves in adoration. Next verse, they believe in God and the last day. Uh, then yes, enjoy, but then it also goes what in is and right. changes that. Sorry? It also specifies that Christians, if they believe that Jesus is the Son of God, then they are bound to the hell because God has no children, God has no partner. And to say that God has children no. or a partner is a damnable offense. No, no. So it's the Quran a, does say that if no, you are no. a Christian and no. you believe in the Trinity, okay. you're going to hell. I specified no. that already. Now, Quran says, uh, uh, chapter 3, verse 115, I was continuing, and whatever good they do will never be removed from them. And Allah is knowing all, uh, knowing of all, uh, sorry, the righteous. Okay? So, so you're pointing out a contradiction then? Sorry, no, it's not a contradiction. It's a completion. If, okay? if the Quran says, okay, that you, if you believe in the Trinity, if you say that God has children or that God has partners or that Jesus okay. is God, if you right. say any of those things, you're going to hell. No, it's not saying. And then okay, you're I, saying that on top of that, that the, that the Quran also says that you, you don't necessarily have to go to hell. I never came across that verse, by the okay. way, and I read it yes. in its, in, in its right. entirety. So I can you're read saying, for you many verses. You're saying that people can be forgiven for yeah. being unbelievers, that you don't have to believe, no, and you can, I, you can I, still be in heaven. Yes. Uh, Quran says that uh, there, there is a verse in Quran that says that those who uh, fight for equality, okay, uh, it is uh, in Quran men mentioned caste, okay, if they get killed, it doesn't say Muslim, if they get killed, Mm -hmm. They they will go to heaven. Okay, so Quran separate people who do good deeds and people who do bad deeds. Yeah. Okay, so it's all about going uh, doing good deeds and uh, you know submitting to Allah's will, which is doing good deeds. So if you do good deeds and you avoid bad deeds, Allah knows that you have errors. You might not understand. Okay, so Allah is. Allah understand all these, so he's not going to punish you for, and he even Except that the Quran you. says over and over and over and over and over and over and over again that yes, if you are an unbeliever, you're going to hell. No, it's another unbeliever, it's a kafir. Kafir, I mentioned for you, I said that kafir doesn't mean disbeliever. And it kafir specifies and again and again that you have to believe in order to avoid have in order to avoid the hell. No, it, 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 it says I, it over and over. No, there's no, no there's said, no sense in saying the book doesn't say the only thing it says. Okay. It says it all the time. Every no, it story, doesn't you're say telling it. me it doesn't say that at all. No, the thing is that you you, you have read the wrong translation, okay? <laughs> yes. Excuse yeah. me. Excuse me. Okay. I I read six translations at once. Okay. Yes. And then just to make sure that I tr that I got it correct, I then okay. after after I wrote my my analysis my comparison of the of the multiple translations then okay. I had a uh, for every surah I had a video meeting where I would I I met with a panel of people who were all raised in Islam and who spoke Arabic and knew all of the traditions to tell me what I got right or wrong yeah it says the thing you say it never says it says it all the time yeah it does Give me you a don't, single don't verse. Tell me that I didn't come with evidence. I've got the whole damn book. Every surah says that, and you're saying it never says it at all. It contradicts the, itself no, say, a lot. No, and you I can't say. use the one time it contradicts this other it thing to say that this is the one thing it means. 
No, it doesn't contradict. It completes the verses by other verses. Okay, so you no, it doesn't. It just adds more confusion, which is another thing that the Quran got wrong. I mean, the Quran always says how clear the Quran is, and yet I have to read six different translations because they all contradict each other. The way that it was translated in from one from Arabic into English still produces six translations that that disagree with each other and then i still need a panel of people who were, who were, know the the cultural traditions to tell me what the interpretations are and then it all has to cite back to hadiths written by nobody knows who or no it does somebody who doesn't know what, what they're talking about so it doesn't matter and ultimately it's talking about the reasons you would go to a hell that does not exist there is no hell if there was a God, there is no God, but if there was a God, there would not be a hell. So the first thing you need to argue about is show me that there's a God first, then prove there is no hell, because that's part of the proof that there is a God, and you can't, and therefore you're out of place. You can't justify Islam after that. All right. You're okay. done. All right. Uh, Aaron, uh, first of all, depend on what is God for you. For you might be God, uh, somebody who's sitting, an entity sitting uh, up there and looking, you know, down on, on the universe. But for me, the God is the universe and we are all inside this, so like okay, I so can say, the giant, giant computer. Sorry? So you're saying you're a pantheist? Um, no, I'm not a pantheist. I'm, I'm uh, you know, Muslim, and I believe in God. You, you, God I, you can either adopt a deistic position, or you can you can take up the position that maybe uh, we have a consciousness to the universe, which is a more pantheistic position. But neither of those things okay. are concordant with Islam, because Islam is tied to the Quran, and the Quran is full of nonsense. Okay. It says that Adam and Eve existed when we know they didn't. It says that Noah's Ark happened when we know it didn't. And it says all these animals were created when they, we know they were not. It says a whole bunch of stupid things about the sun and the moon and the cosmos, the firmament, all this kind of crap that we know never happened. It says that Solomon had genies working for him and that he had the Dr. Doolittle power of being able to talk to animals. He had a conversation with an ant. We no, know, the, uh, there's <laughs> full of fairy tales in here. We know these things didn't happen. No, you have so it doesn't matter if there's a deistic yeah. God or not. Yeah. Islam is still failed. Okay. Uh, Aaron, uh, Quran chapter 3 verse 7 says that those type of verses are unspecific verses of Quran. And the only one who knows the, the true interpretation of those verses is Allah and those firm in knowledge. But those okay. whose heart is So you're saying that God only knows and, and there those, is no God, no, which no. means nobody knows. No. Or listen to me. I said, Allah says only God, only Allah and those firm in knowledge. Okay, so there are people who know, but it says that those whose heart is corrupted, they try to interpret it in a way suitable for their agenda. So you yep. go. So you got the poisoning listen. of the well thing going on so, there. So you are going to uh, you listen to some people like this APs. Uh, you know, he just changed everything the way he wants. Okay, and. So these type of verses, they need, uh, you know, people who have the right knowledge to explain it, you know, correctly, that uh, Solomon didn't talk to aunts and so on. So that's a, a different, you know, uh, a long uh, discussion. But you said about disbeliever, give me a verse so that I can prove you that Quran doesn't say disbelievers, okay? Quran says kuffar. Yeah, and, over and over and over again, it, okay. it says so, that you have, you must believe in order to save yourself from the hell. It doesn't just say no, coffers. Say. But I'm not I'm not going to argue the scripture. Okay. We're arguing we're arguing that whether it, the whole the collection of all of that, which is all full of nonsense, okay. is that collection true? It doesn't matter if there's a God or not. Okay. It really doesn't. Yes. If there is a God, and there isn't, but let's let's pretend for a moment there is. If there is a God, there still is no hell, and Islam is still false. Why, uh, why, if uh, uh, God uh, punished Adolf Hitler, do you think what? that it is just that, because God is just, okay? God, but God is, is not just, just in the Quran. No, 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 that, no listen. No, God, God judge in, in both the Bible and the Quran, God judges people not for the actual, well, in, in the Quran, there, I'll give you this, the Quran actually does judge people over evil actions where the Bible does not. Okay. But, it, but what the Quran more likely judges for 
is belief. It really no, does. It does. So you, you have to believe a certain way or else you're out. No, this is this is the way this is the way you have been, you know, uh, persuaded by somebody. Okay, but it is not. I read is, the Quran. No, no Quran is different uh, yes. versions of it. Okay, yes, it All wasn't right. somebody else who who misled me. It was the Quran said that. Okay, I read for you several verses, and I can read. Yeah, you read for me a couple it. of contradictions. Yes, yes, yes. And then you Con pretended not a contradiction. that it didn't say the thing that it no, says all the way throughout. No, it, it is not a contradiction; it's a completion. Okay, and I. It's uh, not a completion if it says yes. if it says one thing and then says the exact opposite thing later. No, it it doesn't say uh, opposite. It says that those yes, who do does. good deeds. Those who do good deeds, they will enter heaven. I can read for you many yeah, it, I, I know. It does say that those who do good deeds. But, it, but the, almost the, almost consistently, I've noticed, that the, the Quran constantly conflates doing good with believing. And it says, it even specifies a few times that, that not believing is doing evil. It conflates those things. No, and it's very okay. explicit about it. Okay. It doesn't say believing, it says to be being mu'min. It's about mu'minun, okay? And mu'minun doesn't mean uh, believers, it means those who are saved, okay? Those who do not harm people, okay? So this is uh, all so about... You still have to believe. Okay, no, it's... And, and, I say, it does say over and over and over again answer, yes. okay, that believing say, is doing good. That believing okay. means doing good, oh. and doing good means believing. It does. No. Quran I've, made, says I've that, made many, many notes about that in my upcoming book. Okay, okay. Quran says that those who are uh, in the hell, those who get punished, okay, when they see the punishment, they say, oh, Lord, send us back so that we do good deeds. They don't say send us back, back so that we believe. They say send us back so that we do good deeds. So it's about all, and I can read for you many verses. It's all about. Yeah, and I can read for me. Deeds. I can read for you many verses that say what I say too, because okay, it right. does read say what you say. It doesn't say. Okay, and read. that's not even the issue. The issue yeah. is the Quran is wrong for a whole bunch of different reasons. But the bigger thing than that is understanding why there cannot be a hell. Why that contradicts the notion of God? So we can just we can just toss out Islam. Islam is wrong because it says there's a hell. We, we we it says a lot of things that are wrong, but let's let's just focus on the Quran saying that there's a hell, and we okay. know there's not a hell because there's not a God. But even if why we, you do, why if you we know? pretend for a moment that there is a God, there still isn't a hell, and Quran is still wrong. So you say that you know that there is no hell. How do you know that there is no not a hell? I'm sorry, what? You said that you know that there is no hell. How do you know that? Well, if there was a God, as I said, okay. first of all, hell couldn't exist unless there is your version of God. But if there actually was a God, then hell still wouldn't exist because the God wouldn't create it, nor would the God allow it. Why? Because people who have a bullshit story to sell who need to acquire your tithing and need to assume control over your families and your belief systems and your politics, they want you to believe made up bullshit stories. And, and they need you to believe that so badly that if you don't buy the heaven, the, the impossible promise of the posthumous reward, if you don't buy into that, then they have to give you the threat of a fate worse than death in order to, to, you know, to control the gullible through fear. So that's why hell was invented. It's not a concept that would actually exist if there really was a God, because God would not mercilessly punish anybody for eternity. Nobody ever did anything so evil that it would be, they would warrant an eternity of being burned alive and skinned alive and tortured by every other means. Nobody ever deserved that. No God would ever do that. No God would ever allow that. Mm -hmm. The only reason it exists is as a concept for people who want to evoke fear to extort money and tithing. All right. Okay. First of all, that uh, is metaphorical, that uh, burning and so on, because I believe that uh, on the other side, we are not bodies. We are souls. And he's not going to, you know, it's like a nightmare for those uh, who okay. have been like Adolf Hitler, like uh, these uh, ISIS and so on. Such a people, I uh, believe that they sh uh, they deserve to be uh, you know judged okay and punished because they were not punished in this life okay so this is uh, and if they just go on uh, you know what is the purpose of punishment 
the, the purpose of punishment is that they have, you know, been uh, hurting people. They have been killing people. So, and God, uh, they does punishing it. them fix that? Does that make the people not hurt? Okay, uh, that one uh, is up to God to decide. Okay, if it will help. But for some people, it helps. Okay, for some people, they get afraid. For, for the you know other side so they will not do bad deeds but pa- some people and I, I this is I say this is um, my belief that they should be uh, somehow you know punished for the what they were doing here on this okay, planet but, but again should, because, back to the same question not, I just asked no, what is the okay. purpose of punishment okay the purpose uh, of punishment uh, f- because they didn't uh, follow his commands and he's the creator okay he was telling them to do good deeds. And they didn't, okay? Okay, so they, what's they the rejected. purpose? Sorry? So you, you say they should be punished. Why should they be punished? Why people yeah. should be, yeah, why should people should be punished yeah. for their wrongdoing, okay? Okay, but so wh- I, why? You, you don't understand that, one, no? Because you no, have no, done no, I don't something. think you understand that. That's why no. I'm asking you. Yes. Why should they be punished? Because they have done such a horrific, uh, you know, crimes uh, against humanity. Okay. And, and they so, should be, so why should they be punished? Why they should be punished? Because right. I said, yes, because they have done, you have done something wrong. You have to uh-huh. you know, be punished. Okay, so you've done something done. wrong. Not just something think, wrong. You think that That's somebody right. who's done something wrong should be punished. Yeah. Why? Why should be punished? Right. Yeah. Why not? Can you tell me? Why, <laughs> why not? <laughs> no, tell me why not. No. Aaron, tell me why is, not. So there has to no, be, when you decide to punish yeah, someone. Because it is just. Because it is just. How is it just? In it, in what way? So, so you, you want to punish somebody. If you want to fine them, if the if the punishment is a fine, okay. we could then apply that fine okay. to, say, the, the, the next of kin or to the victims. You know, you, it'd be like a, a lawsuit. You know, So there's a benefit to the person who's been hurt or wronged. What I'm trying to get at is when you're punishing someone, say if you're say you're going to punish them through a fine. Okay, good. Now, you, now you've got some restitution for the victim. There's some benefit there. There's other types of punishment that the result or the purpose of those other types of punishment could be for rehabilitation, which I think would be brilliant, yeah. especially if you're going to have something that, that's going to live forever, forever and ever and ever. You can't judge somebody that's going to live 70 jillion billion years on a lifespan of, what, 30 before they get ended up killed or something like that. So all right. if you're going to be an intelligent being, much less a superior being, but if you're going to be intelligent at all, then there has to be a, a reason for the punishment. What is the goal of the punishment? Because if it is insane revenge forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, then you're not talking about a just God. You're talking about an evil God. So okay. if, if there's a benefit, if there's a goal, if there's some kind of restitution for the punishment, then what is that rest? What? Why would you punish someone? What's the goal of that? What are you trying to achieve? Look, uh, Aaron, that's up to God. Okay, because I I said beginning. Okay, I said from the beginning. I don't follow God. Not, just let, let's say it's not oh, up to look, God. Let's put it okay. up to you for okay. a moment. You're All God, right. or you're somebody, and you're going to decide that somebody needs to be punished. Okay. What is your reason for punishing it? Is it? Because you want to get justice for your your victims, meaning that you need to benefit the victims in some way, or you want to rehabilitate the person who's done wrong so so that they understand that they've done something wrong and can do better. Somebody has been killed. You cannot benefit by finding that person. Okay, that person's life has been ended. So there's no benefit to being tortured mercilessly. All there is is the evil. Of your imaginary God. All right. Okay. Uh, Aaron, my concern is not what's happening next life. Okay. My concern is what's happening on this planet in uh, in this life. Okay. So my concern is that I said from the beginning that I follow God, not just because he exists. I'm not following him because he's going to punish people who are doing bad deeds. Okay. I'm following him because he has changed our life to a better one. Okay. In the past. I, we can go through that. No, it doesn't. And, okay. And then he's going to change our life to a perfect life in the future. So, no, I, he no, doesn't. Okay. Islam right. is wrong about that too. Okay. If, if Islam, everything that the, that the Quran says 
Can I ask a question, Aaron? Aaron, can I ask a question? Did Christianity change uh, Romans and Greeks from you know uh, crucifying people, uh, killing people in the stadium? Did Christianity you know abolish all those barbaric acts or not? No, sadly, because religious people tend to be statistically more in favor of torture of prisoners, and they're more in favor of the death penalty. And the the highly religious so are also finish? statistically more likely to be child right. abusers. So, and ha- so abusers how it finished? So, so how it finished? Those uh, barbaric acts of Romans and Greeks. How it finished? How how I can't understand what you're saying. How the barbaric what? acts of Romans and Greeks. Those uh-huh. killing, uh, uh, you know, gladiators in the stadiums, crucifying people, uh-huh. uh, you know, uh, all that that finished after Christianity. Yeah, they, they were abolished. So how it finished? If, if oh, what, the if thing it, that's still going on was abolished after Christianity. Okay. So why uh, why it was abolished? Abolished. Well, why wasn't it? No, why? So, so it was that Christians like to argue that there was a time when they were fed to the lions or whatever, because a Christian is not complete if they can't pretend to be persecuted somehow. No, they didn't do it against Christians. They did it against the, the slaves. Yeah, they brought the slaves and then yeah, they, yeah. they put yeah, and the, and the Jews did the same thing. So that the, uh, the, the Jews before them, you mean Moses commanding his people to go murder the Midianites, just slaughter everybody, burn okay. the village down to the ground, take all the booty. Oh, and of the children, kill all the mothers right in front of their sons, then kill the, okay. same, kill the sons in front of any mothers you haven't killed yet. But the little girls, the preteen girls, all inspect right. them to see if they've had sex with a man. And if they have not had sex with a man, you may keep those preteen virgins for yourself. Nudge, nudge. All right. Yes, I understand. They were. Uh, I say that. Uh, I yeah, and that was that was no, Moses. Look, no, no, no. I say so that uh, your yeah. God didn't stop no, no, that no. evil. He didn't stop okay. the Christian evil. He doesn't okay. stop Muslim evil. He perpetuates right. his own that's evil. It. Look, according that's to it. the stories, because he yeah. still has this hell concept where yeah. you have this disproportionate eternal punishment, which, by your own admission, serves no damn purpose. There's no rehabilitation. Okay. Because you're never going to get a chance to learn your lesson. That's the thing that really bothers me about the hell concept. You have all these people that get no evidence that hell exists. They're just told to believe that you better believe. And if you don't believe, you're going to hell. And then you'll say, oh, I wish that I'd believed. Well, it's too late now, isn't it? And now we're going to punish you for 11 jillion billion years, forever yeah. and ever, all right. times okay. 10. Okay. Uh, you went again uh, to that part. I said that. I believe that, uh, you know, religion has changed our life to better. Uh, no, no, no. Christian- religion no, has okay. changed our okay. lives. That's okay. true. It okay. has it has impeded, no. retarded, or reversed project pro- progress in every application that it has ever touched. It has been a net negative against humanity. It is responsible for okay. the greatest evils, virtually so all how, of the greatest I, evils. My question was history. how do... My question was how those uh, barbaric acts of Romans and Greeks finished there in Europe. They just stopped it or it was because of Christianity? Because it started out that Christianity was illegal because they were obnoxious. And then with it, but once, uh, once I forget the guy's name, I'm having a senior moment, that, uh, Constantine, once he became Christian, within 70 years, it became illegal to be anything but Christian. And then okay. suddenly you have, after Christianity took over, then suddenly you've got 9 million uh, pagan women who were killed by, by the, uh, the Inquisition simply for not being Christian. And that says nothing about the holy wars. So yeah, religion, the Abrahamic God, the war God that you worship, has been the the source of like virtually all evil. I mean, there's there are some exceptions, but most of the greatest evil that has happened in American or human history has been because of belief in your God. But okay. well, that's not what we're arguing about right now. We're well, not arguing about Christianity, what was wrong with them. We're arguing about Islam, the lies that are compiled atop the lies of Christianity. No, so I, one of I'm the just, lies that yes. Christianity told was right. the one about hell. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just yeah, Islam I was trying, repeats yeah. that same lie. No, I'm just trying to tell you that uh, I said that the biggest miracle is not going to, uh, you know, change some people's mind. Okay, that's why I was going to tell you that if, uh, because I believe that Islam changed people's lives. For example, Islam saved uh, millions of girls from being buried alive. Okay, 
That's one of many great, uh, you know, uh, good uh, things that Islam, for example, I can give give you, you, I'll give you that too, that in the pre-Islamic times, there was that uh, barbaric Arabic culture where they, they were so sexist that they thought that if you have a girl child and you're only like you, you can only have so many children, whether that you don't or you don't have enough money to support everybody. Well, she's a girl, so she's without value. So let's just bury the, the baby in the desert. I'm glad that Islam says, no, you shouldn't bury the girl. You should sell her to somebody instead. No, Islam say, doesn't say where it says that you should sell. <laughs> I don't know from where you get this hour. Okay, another thing is that again we, from Quran the Quran. Say, have you read uh, it? Because uh, I don't think you have. Very have you noticed where it knowledge. describes your heaven, for example? No, this no, no, this okay. this is one of the great indictments of the Quran, and how injustice it is. And since you're talking about the injustice okay. of sexism right now, yeah. let's look at heaven. Okay. You get to take however many wives you had on this planet, and you okay. you can only have four. Not a how many. Unless, not a how many. You can only have four unless you're Muhammad himself, because yeah. special pleading, of course. You but cannot you get take four. Your four you wives, get four. Get, you get die. Get, you go to heaven. You take your four wives with you. Only one wife. What? Only one wife. Yeah, well, you can have up to four according to the Quran. No. You really ought to read the Quran because it, uh, no, it's I read. I have read it. You no, you should read it. I so it says that you can it. have up to four wives. <laughs> I have read it. And you get and you take you get to take your wives to heaven, or they they come to heaven with you, and they're still your wives in heaven. But when you get to heaven, you also get other virgins. You don't get seventy-two virgins. The Quran never says that. I don't honestly know where people got the seventy-two number from. It doesn't say that. But what it does say is that there are other women who did not exist on the earth, who didn't have lives on the earth. They exist only in heaven. They are called into existence by God specifically so that they can be virgins to service you. So the the wives that you had on earth now have to wait in line, not only between the other wives, but they also have to wait between behind your soulless sex robots that you get in heaven. And And that's not even the, that's that's as, that's bad enough but there's there's worse there's children also who never grow up who exist in heaven only to be waiters forever they wait on you they're children that bring you non-alcoholic beverages while you sit in the great in god's great lobby forever on sofas discussing what okay. you, you, your 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 heaven is the the epitome of monotony I couldn't uh, imagine worse existence. I mean, it's Aaron, hard to imagine yes, you know, being tortured in the hell, but I mean, yes. the, the heaven isn't really any better. Yes. Not when you stretch it out over an eternity. Yes. Aaron, these are uh, ways that pe- uh, God was talking to the people of the past, okay? And I said that the heaven is, uh, we are not body, we are soul, and everything is, I believe, everything Except is, there's no soul either. Yes, everything And we, and we know that. Okay, okay we that's, know that. Uh, that's So your, there's no support for mind-body dualism. But, Let's, neither in neuroscience nor even no. in philosophy, right where you would exactly expect that there would be. If there was such a thing as a soul, we would have shown that by okay. now. Even being supernatural, we would still have known it by now if it was real. And it's Aaron, not. Aaron, Aaron, okay. I believe that although um, I'm not so, I mean, uh, Mahatma Gandhi was a you know, pagan, but I believe that it was great. He wasn't a that pagan, he was Hindu. Oh, uh, yeah, Hindu. Okay. Anyway, uh, he believed in, uh, we call them pagans, okay. But anyway, so, but uh, yet he was, it was great that he came because he benefited humanity, okay. He saved uh, uh, Indians from, uh, you know, colonialism. So, and I believe that uh, uh, Islam, Christianity, Judaism, they benefited, uh, you know, humanity. And um, for example, in China, uh, Muslims and Christians, you know, they don't uh, boil dogs and cats alive. They don't grill them alive. But some other people who do not believe in these religions, uh, they do such a terrible, you know, acts. They they grill uh, dogs alive. They they boil them alive. So these are uh, some small, uh, you know, great teachings of these uh, religions that taught uh, uh, people not to be cruel against the animals and it is not uh, only that for example as a as a persian okay as i've persian, seen muslim uh, traditions let me, let me continue let me there, continue there's some muslim traditions that are that, 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 that i've seen videos for where they they have like a cow walking through a crowd of people and everybody throws darts at it 
and and there's all kinds of like you know death by a thousand cuts sort of barbaric ceremonies that, are, are you saying so. that none of these are real I've, I've no, seen them. I, no this is uh if if somebody do that this is absolutely against islam okay but anyway so I so all these muslims do this for islam and it's muslims, absolutely against islam i haven't you should seen, represent islam better because there's a whole yes. lot of muslims no i haven't seen such a things that muslims do i don't know from i have never seen such a things okay uh, another thing is that I was going to tell you is that uh, uh, as a Persian, okay, we had a religion, despite we were, uh, Persia was a great uh, empire, but we never had, uh, you know, slaves and we didn't, never had those crucifixions, the stoning and all these things because we had a religion that taught us three, just three commands, good deeds, good thoughts and good, uh, you know, words, okay, through these three teachings, Persia never had such a barbaric act, okay? So religion has changed our life to a better one. But no, no, it hasn't. Okay. It has right, changed right. every okay, aspect that. of our lives All to right, be worse. Right. Okay. Everything, no, religion has changed our lives for the worse. It's the made world. everything worse. Okay. There's not there's not a good aspect to believing things that are not evidently true. You should never be allow yourself to be completely convinced of okay. something that is evidently not true. And apologetics is all about trying to make believe things that are not true. Okay. But we know we're so, not true. Uh, but but the, the thing is that um, Islam has made me a much better person myself. No, it hasn't. Okay. Okay. It You're has. a better person okay. than the Quran. Okay. You are a better I, person than your, it, it Bible, than, than your Quran describes because okay. your Quran is evil. All right. I've read uh, it. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and I've met and I, and people I, just in general are okay. better than the atrocious, abominable, ghastly God that would condemn people for such trivialities as disbelief. Okay. It's not disbelief. I said it again many times. I know that you were wrong about yeah, this yes, and you're never going to okay. concede your error, but that is exactly what it says over yeah, and over it and over. Say, I, I, I could, over again. Yeah, I could just prove you, you know, you could just. I could just a, prove that I'm right. Yeah, I have yeah. all the, I have the whole Quran. I've already no, written give, a book give me about a, it. Yes. Give me a see, single verse that says. And I have every single verse that says yeah, exactly it's, what it's, I said it says. Yes, and I can prove it. Yeah, um, uh, Aaron. Let's check it together, okay? Let's bring up that verse, okay? And then that we see. verse, it's in almost every surah. As okay, I said give me again. one verse. It is kafir, Aaron. Uh, I said it is not just one verse. It's not just one word. It's over and over again, and it specifies explicitly Aaron. again and again and again in various places, many places over that you have to believe, and if you and believing is equivalent to doing good. And that doing bad is equivalent to disbelief. It does, in fact, say that over and over and over and over again. Okay, can I share uh, the screen, please? Uh, do you see the screen? Yes, I see the screen. Yeah, you see the screen. Great. Uh, this is chapter 16, verse 83, okay? Look at the translation, all right? This is about disbelievers. In Quran, says, they who uh, turn away from it are fully aware of God's blessings, but none and the less they refuse to acknowledge them as such, since most of them are giving to deny the truth. Okay. Well, thank you for making my point for me and admitting that the Quran outward lies. Okay. So, so that's an outright lies? lie. About what? Because, yeah, Anything. because, because unbelievers do not deny the truth. The problem is you don't have truth. Okay. Yeah, and we're not denying the truth. We're, no, 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 no. We're denying I'm, I'm just, the lie. No, we're no, showing going, the truth. No, I'm and the truth going, is what the facts are, and no. you don't have those. No, Aaron. All please, you have is the lie. No, Aaron. Please, I'm just trying to translate the word kafirun here in okay. Arabic. Look, in Arabic is written kafirun, which they here they. Uh, sorry, uh, it went. Here in this verse, they change it not to disbelievers. Some of them do that. But, but yeah, they Let's did. Say, they wait, didn't change it. It's still talking no, about no. disbelievers. No, no. It's yeah, still no. talking about disbelief. And Aaron, that Aaron. is still a lie. That's Look, an outright Aaron. lie. Aaron. Where it says the majority of people who don't believe, one, are aware of God's blessings, two, that, that's a lie, and that we deny the truth, because that's a lie, too. Okay. Look. We're, but there, there are no blessings to your religion. Okay. There's there's, there's not, horror, 
okay. that you Look. have never understood. You, okay. you, 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 maybe you will, because I know a lot of people who come away from Islam. No, it doesn't say the truth. Once Aaron, they become, Aaron, once they become Aaron. ex-Muslims, they realize that the, you know, the, the darkness Aaron. they lived in that they thought was light. Aaron, it doesn't say that the, the truth. It says that they recognize God's. I'm purpose. sorry. I thought I thought you just read for me a translation that yes, says I, I that most that of are, them are given to denying the truth. The tr- I, I, that is what it says, I, isn't it? I mean, I'm that's God. your citation. No, that lie Aaron, right there. That lie right there. That's your Aaron, own citation. Aaron, Aaron, this is many different translations. I'm going to compare. But this is the one you're showing. So I'm that's the to, one you're backing. The lie yes. you just showed me is the lie you're trying to push on me right Aaron, now. Can you please let me uh, explain, please? I'm going to show you that one verse. How many different translations? Yeah. So they one have verse to, lied. Are you going to so at least admit is, that one no. verse lied? <laughs> That verse specifically? Aaron, Aaron, I'm saying that. It is one verse, okay? There uh-huh. are many, and it is a lie. Okay, no, there are many. Yes, it is a lie. Okay, the, what is lie? Can you tell me? It says that they recognize... When you say something that is not true, for no. a deceptive effect, that is a lie. Okay. That statement no. is a lie. It's yeah, sa- it's that a, statement okay. says that the majority of those who do not, who refuse to acknowledge that... God's blessings. One, we don't refuse. So there's a third lie in the same sentence. It's not that we refuse. We don't believe the empty, unsupported assertion of impossible nonsense. Okay. And then it is not the majority. It says the majority of us are given to denying the truth. No, okay. the vast majority of us, and I would say the entirety, but let's just no, be charitable and say the majority of us come. want the truth and only care no. about the truth, and Islam is not Aaron, the truth. Aaron, Islam Aaron, says it's the truth have, because no. it is a lie, and every no. lie says it's the truth. Aaron, you don't let me to talk, please. Okay? I say, All right, Quran go ahead and says, continue no, to lie for Quran your says, Quran says most of them are kafir, Okay, here somebody else has put, uh, it is TB Arwing, yeah? They recognize God's favor, then they uh, dis, uh, sorry, disregard it. Most of them are disbelievers, okay? Another one says, and most, uh, sorry, most of them are the one who are ungrateful. Most right, of so that, them that, goes, are that conforms to what I said earlier. No, no. I'm just saying, Aaron, listen to me, please. Right, so we agree. Saying, so no. you, you can go to you can go to Muslim hell even if you're a believer. We agree on that too. Okay, but Aaron, I'm just telling you that kafir here doesn't mean disbelieve, okay? When it comes to most to all okay, kafirs, again, it's sorry. not down to one word and it's not down to one verse. No, it, it is, is not about over money. and over and over again. I, I, I couldn't you, cite all I, the verses to I say. Can give well, actually, you, I already have, I but they're in my you, book. You'd have to get the, the whole book I can for that. Give, I, don't, I can give you many verses. Okay, And I can give you many problem. verses that prove that you're wrong. Okay. And, and this, is, this one okay. that you've just cited is a lie. That's I a lie. I tell you that. This is That's a, three a, lies a, in one sentence no, that I've counted so far. Look, let me tell you. Quran says, these believers, okay... Most of these believers are kafir. It doesn't say all these believers are kafir. But it does Even say that the majority of the unbelievers are no. given to denying the truth. No, and no, that no. No, is no. A no, it is lie. Not. It is not. It says favor. It is a lie. No. No, no. What you say is the majority doesn't apply to anybody. No, it There's says, nobody who denies nobody who denies the Quran or who who, okay. who who fails to believe in the Quran is necessarily given to denying the truth. I know lots of people who are given to denying the truth. I call them Christians. Okay. And so those people may you know that the Christians may reject the Quran because they're not because they're given to denying you know the, the the truth of reality and that's why they're christian but it has nothing to do with giving with with rejecting the truth of islam because there is no truth to islam islam itself is a lie no it is not about rejecting islam is just about rejecting. of course that's a, that's all that verse was no. talking about it, no it, the verse is talking okay. they they know uh they know the favor of allah and then they deny it okay then yeah. deny it, okay? But they most, don't know that, and they don't deny them, that. It says most of them are kafir. Most of them, it doesn't say most of them are disbelievers. Most of them are those who do bad deeds, okay? It's about doing bad deeds. Kuf is about doing 
committing bad deeds. I can give you many verses that says that those... And I can give you many <laughs> verses that contradict you and show that I'm right. And no, I already have listed no, many verses me, that show that I'm right and that you're yeah. wrong. So so you say, so you say, kof, kof means disbelief, yeah? No, that's not what I said. Quit straw so manning. I've already corrected that same error four or five times in this conversation. Quit okay. repeating that, that mistake. Which mistake? The one where you pretend that I'm saying that coffer is the only word. I, no matter how many times I've corrected that mistake of yours, okay. you keep repeating that same mistake. No, but you Stop say coffer is... That's not what I'm saying. So what is coffer? Can you tell me, please? I don't care what coffer is. No, but I said say... it's not down to one word, and it's not down to one verse. There no. are different descriptions in various places throughout the Quran where it says that you must believe, and it equates that believing equals doing good and disbelief equals being bad the word kafir doesn't always come up it's yeah. not dependent on that one word please don't make me explain the same thing to you again no you say that these believers go to hell which i tell you that these Dis believers do go to hell, hell according no, it's to not. the quran okay. but okay. we know that there according is that no quran, quran. Okay. We, so we, we know that there is no hell okay and that there is no god okay. and if there was a god Right. Quran would still be wrong, and Islam would still be wrong. So it's okay. pointless to even discuss this. Let's get back to the topic. Islam Is Islam true? No, not about a damn thing. Not okay. about one single thing. All right. Now, let me tell you in this way, okay, Aaron, I, uh, I say that humanity has two ways, okay? It is either to live in this, uh, you know, uh, sinful or jungle, sinful world or this jungle that uh, uh, the strongest one get the most and the weakest one get little or nothing and everybody want to kill each other, you know, to become richer and richer. Or they have to live in a world where they love one another, they share everything with each other. So humanity has these two ways. Okay, if we want to live in this jungle, then we don't need Islam, we don't need Christianity, we don't need anything because this jungle is run by our nature, okay? But if you want to live in that human world where we love one another, there is no Then we must give happening. up religion and adopt okay. secular humanism. Okay. okay, that's good. If you can, I say that. Yeah, we, we can, we no, can definitely no. give up religion, which is okay. the source of all the evil you were just talking about. Okay. And we can just have humanist values, which is where I'm at. Okay. So if, you, if we want to live in what you call the jungle and I call reality... Okay. Then we can do that, and we can have brotherly love and humanitarian concerns, and okay. we can just give up pretending to believe things that are not really true. Okay. No, but look, if if that's not a big deal, okay? The big deal is that if you can create that world, I believe, this is my belief according to Quran. Well, I'd like to create I, that world. Yes, There's just one yes. huge impediment in the way, yes. okay. and that's religion. Okay, that's... Uh, I, now, I now, once we get rid of religion, no. so that we can stop religion from changing no. people's lives for the worst? No. But, but if religion, if religion says, okay, if religion also says that we have to live in that world, do you think that uh, it, it is not help for you, for your uh, world, that your worldview? Because I believe it is the jungle My worldview, such as it is? That you I could be summarized with this. I don't want to be fooled into believing anything that is not evidently true. No, just obviously a few minutes until Q and A. Yeah, but uh, Aaron, uh, if the, the religion back you up, okay, why shouldn't you uh, accept it? For example, I oh, said, if if a religion were to back me up, then I would accept it. But since yeah. no religion backs you up, then yeah. I am forced to reject it. Okay, but my religion back you up and say that... But it we doesn't. Have to be, no, your religion my, contradicts your religion, everything okay. that is good about humanity. Okay. Your that, religion is a perversion of our nature. All right. Your religion is evil. No, religion in general is evil, but okay. yours is most evil among them. Okay, so, so you mean that if I say love one another, okay, that's but evil. But the Quran doesn't? No. The Quran, the Quran says, says to judge people eternally no, for the mind no. crime of no. disbelief? Yeah, that's that's and another. for the mind crime of having other okay. beliefs. Yeah, that, because on the, the whole God of Abraham thing, it doesn't matter which version it is. Okay. I mean, and this this is something I noticed when I was eight years old. Okay. I was always hearing about wars in the Middle East. I was always hearing about conflicts. And I thought it strange that the Jews, the Muslims and the Christians 
each of them claim to be the religion of peace and that all of them claim to have the same God who is the God of loving forgiveness and mercy. And yet these three religions have been at war with each other each since their inception and apparently will be at war eternally, proving that yours is not the God of peace or loving forgiveness. No, it is not so. <clears throat> I, uh, right, it is this, not so. That's why you should give up no, no. religion. But I'm it saying, is wrong. It's no. not just that the Quran says a bunch no. of stupid things that we I know are not true. No, it's I not think. just that your your religion believes things that are socially backward. You don't listen it's, to me. It's Aaron. just evil. The concept I, that you have to believe that we have to control what people think. I, Aaron, I that alone say, is evil. The, the fact that, that it is constantly using every <clears throat> logical fallacy throughout the Quran to just simply assume your conclusion, the question-begging fallacy is riddled through that book. I, I don't, That's I another say, reason why you should give it up. The fact that you have to do the submission five times a day where you have to <clears throat> do the culturally forced submission to prayer, even if you don't believe, that alone is evil. That is evil enough by itself without anything else added in. I think that we that, should, we, I we think should that, completely uh, abandon yeah, that I belief. Think that, yes. Aaron, I think that you should I'll give you the last word, uh, Perfect right. Dawa, and then we've got to yes, go to the Q&A. Yeah. I, th I think that you shouldn't go, uh, you, do, you shouldn't talk about things that you are not so, you know, uh, knowledgeable in oh you're right that's things. why okay. i'm talking about okay. this and that's about, why you should okay. take your yeah, own me, advice <laughs> let read me the damn book you're trying to perfect you're trying yeah. to protect right now yeah let me talk let me talk you said that christianity judaism and islam they are at war no they are not at war it is just the powers who abuse religions they want for example i know that you in that uh, debate with daniel i call him daniel isis jew uh, sorry Do what uh, daniel isis jew Hagigachu, but I call him ISIS Jew because he's a very terrible person for me. His religion is terrible for me. If that's Islam, I'm the biggest enemy of that Islam hour. Okay, so you have to well, understand. Thank you for that. Yes, that you have to understand that my Islam, the Islam I believe, is totally different to that Islam. So if you, please, if you arrange a debate between me and him, I will prove you that he doesn't have any knowledge of Islam. Okay, can you do that? Because well, I have asked James, well, but I, unfortunately... You, I'd love can, to see that, too. I mean, clearly he didn't have any knowledge of atheism. No, he, he didn't. Have, he's a, he's a All terrible... All right, I think we'll jump into the Q&A because you're both going against Daniel, who's not here to defend himself. So we're going to jump into the Q&A. We've got a number of questions here, folks. I'm going to read through them as fast as possible. So I want to say, first, Zagros Ozcan, thanks for your question, says, according to the Quran, where does sperm come from? All right, that uh, uh, it is uh, doesn't say that it's coming from the backbones. It is about uh, uh, you know that children are the back. You know, it is in Arabic. They say, for example, uh, <clears throat> you know, I I have your back. For example, you know, it's something that it's coming from this the same generation. All right, so it doesn't say that it comes from backbones. It's just something misunderstanding it and says... misinterpretation. Misinterpretation. All right misunderstanding and misinterpretation it doesn't say it is uh, <clears throat> uh, because everybody knew that from where uh, sperm comes okay okay but but everybody didn't know that the people uh, back no, then didn't know that, that there was such a thing <clears throat> a mammalian egg that hadn't been discovered until centuries but later they didn't know the egg. so you know, Muhammad wrote, and by, by Muhammad, I, I don't necessarily believe there was a Muhammad, clearly this was a group effort, but whoever <clears throat> cobbled together the Quran believed that uh, that, that all that men were the only provider of the vital juice that became humans, and they just had to put it in the womb. They didn't realize it was an egg there. So they called it a clot of blood, or they called it a, a, a drop of water. You know, they, they contradict themselves a few times, but then they also say that seminal fluid comes from between the backbone and the ribs, which is just bad anatomy, even for the time. Okay. I said that what it says, and uh, <clears throat> it's up to uh, people to, you know, to interpret it themselves. And yes. wouldn't you think that if God had written this book, that he could have done a better job? That, that uh, we uh, have yeah. this <clears throat> argument in yeah. the 21st century, this wouldn't still be going on. He could have yes. phrased it a little bit better. Yeah, uh, Aaron, I have said it many times before as well. God could uh, send a prophet today and uh, split the moon and so on, but he decided... He didn't to need to send a prophet at all. 
Yeah, he could have he, just spoken to all of us at the same yes, time. Yes, there, are of, yes, there are a ton yes. more questions. I got to move to this. This yeah, Zach Rosas can ask as well. Why does the Quran claim that waters do not mix at estuaries? And then in parentheses, put 25, 53, and 55, 19. I think they're referring to verses or passages. They say, because they definitely do mix, looks like God didn't know science. <laughs> all right. Um, this, uh, I haven't been uh, actually. Uh, pondering about such a things because for me the most important is that how uh, Quran and Islam uh, guide me and guide humanity to live um, today and uh, to guide us to a better world okay so these are um, and some people uh, take it as uh, they take uh, videos from seas that they are not mixed to two different uh, you know color of water that they don't mix so this is uh, they say that this is a miracle because how Prophet Muhammad knew that the, the water doesn't mix and there are places that the water doesn't mix, okay? So for me, that's uh, not a big issue that I have to, you know, reject those beautiful messages, verses of Quran that says love one another and uh, forgive people and uh, how to live, to reject all those verses just because maybe this, uh, <clears throat> you know, verse I don't understand what exactly it says okay you got it this one coming in from do appreciate it pancake of destiny mm -hmm. says Aaron, what beer do you drink now and how good is it right now i'm having a local brew this is lakewood brewery temptress the temptress is i think uh 10 percent abv but at least it's it's pretty low for me but at least it's double digits and it is an imperial stout that's almost all i drink now you got it Man, Tom Christensen, I didn't see a question. Let me know in the live chat. If you tag me with that Monday debate, I'll read it. Industrial Nerd says, Aaron, how amazing is bacon? I don't know. Are you a bacon fan? Bacon? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I have a problem with it. I have a moral conflict with bacon because I, I had a pet pig and I've had a hell of a time eating pork ever since. <clears throat> wow. And this one from Samir Farsane says, Aaron is wrong, even at the time of Joseph in 16,000 B.C. I think they mean 16. Which is not the right time. They say they knew there are pla planers documented. Also, uh, let's see. Yeah, that, no and that's damn not the right place. time. I don't know what they... Uh, time of Joseph, 1600 B.C.? Yeah, six. That would be that would be earlier than Hosea, and and sorry, that's um, Hosea is one of the oldest books. The story of Joseph isn't isn't that old. Oh, I screwed that up. It was so it was six. They did uh, originally. I said sixteen thousand instead of sixteen hundred. So I just it wouldn't matter. Sixteen hundred is still too old. This one from Tanky says, Aaron, if you were starting a cult, what would you do differently from Islam to make it spread faster? Oh, I don't even want to think about that. Because if coming... I were to start a cult, I would be so rich so fast. This one coming in from Astrohead says, Aaron, I'm at a bar. Can't watch it live, but I'll catch the replay tomorrow. But I can imagine how this is heading. Love the beard, by the way. Thank you. This I just from... would like to say uh, um, very fast that after this debate, I'll go live for those who would like to you know, continue. And I ask questions. I go live on my channel, Perfect Dava. The link is there, so they can call in. And I would like to talk to you later again, Aaron. That would be great. Yeah, it, all of the all of the different surahs that I was talking about in my compiled book, yeah. you can read all of the my analyses of each surah already on my channel, aranrod.com. All right. Just look for the surah in question. Yes. Everything that you you said, the Quran does not say. It actually does say. And I point them out. Okay. And then I will uh, call you, uh, write you, then we can discuss this on your channel perhaps later when I read right. those. Yes, verses. I, I, I look forward to your call. Yeah, and thank you. And, and I hope that you don't take it as a debate because uh, I don't see you as a bad person. Okay. It's not a debate for me. It's I don't see you as a bad person either. Yes, conversation.
All right. I, I, I look I look at believers. I mean, I have to realize that that everybody that is in the atheist movement, all the all, all my activist friends, they were all former believers. Mm-hmm. I was a reborn Christian once upon a time way yeah. back when I, I'm more neo-pagan. That was more of my religious tradition. But I know people who were former missionaries and seminary students and ministers and talk radio hosts and everything for Christian channels. And I don't hate believers Believers are afflicted with something I can cure. Yeah. All right. You got it. These coming in from, appreciate it, Jacob Grosak. Oh, that reminds me, housekeeping stuff. Folks, both of our guests are linked in the description. And that includes, if you're listening via the podcast, all of the debates at Modern Day Debate, the YouTube channel, end up on the podcast for Modern Day Debate, which you can find at virtually any podcast app. And we put our guest links there, too. If you're watching via YouTube, open up a new tab, and then you'll for sure remember to check out their links. You can put their links in that new tab, and that way you can finish the rest of this debate. As this next question is coming in from Jacob, who says, Perfect Dawa, it's probably frustrating to have other people tell you how to interpret the Quran. Are there reliable means or methods that provide independent verification that one's interpretation is correct? Uh, yeah, because you have to put uh, verses uh, beside each other, uh, Quranic verses. Okay, if you have the right, ver- uh, you know, inter- I mean, verses that you put them together and you can prove them, you can show that your your uh, you know your interpretation is reliable. Okay. Not just take one verse of Quran and say that's all. All right. So uh, by giving the evidences from Quran itself, then you can prove that you have the reliable, uh, you know, interpretation. You got it. This one coming in from Zagros Ozkan strikes again. Says is if jinns or demons in Islam are made of fire, verse fifteen twenty six through twenty seven, and they interact with humans, verse thirty four twelve. How can we never see them with our infrared detectors? All right, that's uh, very, very, uh, you know, uh, difficult, uh, you know, subject because I believe myself that jinn are not on this planet. Jinn uh, haven't, there is no any direct verse that Quran says that they have been in contact with uh, human. For me, jinn is unseen, okay? We don't see them, okay? So when we don't see them, we cannot have contact with them. So for me, jinns is the name for uh, for aliens, that God has other creatures, not only humans, but other creatures, uh, but they are not here. We don't see them because they are not on this planet. They are on their planets, okay? And we don't have any contact with them. So I haven't seen any verse of Quran that say we have had direct contact with, with the jinns. Okay. You got it. This one coming in from. Do appreciate your question. Zakus says crucifixion didn't end with Christianity. It continued into Islam and Christianity. In fact, introduced it to Japan in the Sengoku period, which is around 1500. After 350 years without capital punishment. All right. And perhaps it's a, a, the, it's the explanation, but um, I believe because uh, I know that after Christianity came to uh, Europe, uh, I, it didn't stop right away, definitely, but slowly, slowly, Christianity, by Christianity, it stopped in ancient Romans and Greeks. So uh, I believe that that was the work of Christianity. This is, uh, if you, uh, you can call in uh, after this debate on my channel, we can discuss it. Okay, let's see if you have better proof. Sam Harris's yes. Bulldog says, Aaron, would you please be willing to debate Cliff and Stewart again? That's one of our <sighs> most popular debates is Aaron, you and T-Jump debating Cliff and Stewart. What do you think? Up for another? Cliff and Stewart couldn't maintain themselves. I mean, they couldn't they couldn't stay on topic, and and they were looking for not a gotcha. They were they were looking for a moment of outrage. So they, if they would say something that was outrageous, to the point where they say something that is so stupid, so wrong that it would that it would evoke an emotional response, and I replied accordingly, I would see a smile. Oh, we said something that is so damn dumb so dishonest that it riled our opponent we're winning that's not a strategy 
And so I'm I have no interest in debating them because they're not being sincere. That that's a problem. I mean, I there, I debate a lot of people just like one time because the the insincerity is what gets me. These people don't care what the truth is. They're all about trying to defend a lie by any means, even underhanded. This one coming in from Realist Realist says, does RN deny that to argue that we'll figure out X someday with no temporal restriction is to commit an escape to the future fallacy and make an unfalsifiable claim since it can be repeated forever? No, I don't. It's not not only do I not deny that, that is my argument against against most prophecies. You got it. Zaz, Zach Rosaskan strikes again, says, The Quran says people need to be flogged for adultery, perfect dawah. And they say, 24, verse 2, say, they say, So you support Taliban women, or Taliban when they flog women of Afghanistan for Zina? Okay, perfect dawah. I'm not supporting uh, such a things. Actually, uh, this is, imp- if you follow Quran, then it is impossible to flog anybody because this flogging was uh, um, an alternative to that barbaric act of stoning because people were stoning adulterers to death. So Quran came with this, uh, you know, flogging 100 lashes, but Quran put uh, uh, conditions that is impossible to, uh, you know, meet these conditions. Four witnesses, you have to bring four witnesses who have seen this adultery, not even that they came out from, uh, you know, uh, 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 a house or whatever, but you have to have have seen the actual, uh, you know, adultery. And these four witnesses, they must complete 10 conditions that it's almost impossible that you can find a single of them because they have must have never lied. They must have never uh, forgotten their prayers and so on. So they have uh, never stolen anything. So you cannot find a single of them. So there are everything there that you uh, cannot, you know, uh, flag them because we are all sinners. And uh, that the way Jesus, peace be upon him, also said, the, the one who has no sin can throw the first stone because we are all sinners. We cannot punish people. Punishment is only on God's side, sides, is not on our side, okay? Because we are all, always can be, we always can be wrong and people can, uh, you know, for, uh, repent, okay? So we cannot punish people. That's, uh, yes, that's, uh, if you, you follow it perfectly, Quran, then you cannot do that, yes. So what would you say are the two or three most Muslim countries in the world who, who follow Islam the closest? Which Only one? The two or three countries. There, there is no none of them. I haven't none seen of them. any. Okay, no. well that 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 explains a lot because you know we we we've had like Iran and 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 Iran. Saudi Arabia <laughs> and a few others that definitely did flog people. And you're saying okay. that if you follow Quran, it's impossible to do. Yes, yes. That. You know what? Iran, Iranian. Uh, the, the, the Quran Aaron, advocates Aaron, it, but Aaron, if you follow Aaron. the Quran, then you yes. can't do what the Aaron, Quran advocates. Aaron. Aaron, I'm Iranian. Okay, I've been fighting Iranian regime in 43 years. This fascist ISIS regime was placed there by UK and USA, and they have been supporting them until today. You know, they are a bunch of mafia. They don't believe in anything. They believe in money. They worship money. So they do all these to oppress people. They kill that girl, that poor girl, to oppress people, not that they because they believe in Islam. So unfortunately, uh, you you have to know. So, more. so Ra- Raif Badaway in Saudi Arabia, okay, who made a, a Facebook post against Islam. He was sentenced to ten years in prison, estranged from okay. his wife from his wife for the rest of his life, and yeah. given I think it was forty lashes. Yeah, yeah. So Saudi Arabia doesn't follow Quran, according to you. Uh, let me read for you. Uh, let me read for you a verse, uh, uh, verses of Quran. Quran chapter one hundred seven, verse one. Have you seen the one who denies the religion? That is the one who repels the orphans, the orphan, and does not encourage the feeding of the poor. So woe to those who pray, yet are not mindful of their prayers. Those who only show up and refuse to give even the simplest aid. Those in power there, they are living in gold, golden 
you know, golden uh, private jet and so on. So Quran says that they are the same like uh, the one who disbelieves, who doesn't uh, feed the poor and encourages, you know, uh, support. So these so are, in the they summary, just show off. They just show off. That's so, so in the summary, the 40 yeah. lashes that were given to Raif Badawi. Yes. And the 10 years imprisonment. Yes, that's Those were because yes. Saudi Arabia does not follow Quran? No, it does not follow the Quran at all. Okay. That, I, I just wanted one clear yes. statement to that. Yes, not not Iran. Iran, if, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I would not, disagree because the Quran actually advocates that, but I no. wanted to get your position on it clearly. No, no, I said that that's, that was, because if you understand Quran, then you, you know that you cannot punish anyone, okay? That Last rehabilitation time. that you were talking about, yes, it is what we... The, oh, well, then, then again, forward. you've got a contradiction because you've got a certain point in the Quran where it says, let those other, the, the un, let the unbelievers be as they are, let, you know, God will sort them out. But then you get to a point where the Quran says, no, fuck it, kill them. No, uh, okay, we will talk because that's another subject and we, it takes time because uh, I think that... Uh, uh, James want to go on. Otherwise, we can do it on your channel. I, I would be more than happy. Okay, because okay. There may, maybe I, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind a follow up because that way I can gather up all the verses yes, yes. that say the thing that yeah, you said good, that yeah. the Quran never says because it says it a lot. Okay, I will. I will <laughs> Even your you. own citation, your okay. the one verse that you cited for me, that okay. verse said the thing that I said it said that yeah, you said I, the Quran I, doesn't okay. say. Your citation said it. Yes. I will contact you, okay? okay. Uh, this I, one I, yeah. from Very Cameron good. Hall says, drinking camel urine can spread a disease called MERS-COV. Uh, so M-E-R-S-COV. Why yeah. would the prophet recommend it if he knew that he was what he was talking about? Okay, that's a, a trash fabricated hadith, okay? And uh, I believe that uh, there are, not only I believe that all Muslims believe that there are millions of fabricated hadiths, but unfortunately some uh, Muslims who don't think they believe in those fabricated hadiths, these are uh, something that pagans were doing. Uh, unfortunately, in India, they drink, uh, you know, cow urine. So they, perhaps in uh, Arabia, they were drinking camel urine. So they wanted to keep this tradition. So they put this, uh, you know, fabricated hadith that say that Prophet Muhammad said, and that's uh, not the entire hadith. The, the hadith continues to show that Prophet Muhammad was a brutal, barbaric man, okay? Because he killed eight people in such a barbaric act for one person, despite Quran says so many verses against such an act. And that absolutely goes against Quran and any hadith. So I'm not a Quranic because people usually accuse me for being Quranic. So uh, any hadith that goes against Quranic verses is fabricated, okay? That's all. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. Balthazar228 says, and they're quoting you, Muji, according to them. They say that you say, quote, Jesus didn't get everything right, but my religion 700-ish years later did. They say, how is it any more predictive than Mormonism in 1830? If all of the explanations are equally valid, they all are equally incorrect. All right, I'm not going to discuss uh, Christianity and other religions, okay? Because uh, here I'm just to defend Islam, so I'm not. Uh, I have said seem more Christian. Yes, I haven't said uh, that um, anything, you know, against Christianity, and um, I'm, I will not because I I don't want to hurt any. Uh, brother or, or sister, Christ, Christian brothers and sisters, okay? So I'm not going to say anything against Christianity or, or other religions. Yes. Jacob? I would, I would suggest that you might want to consider yourself a Christian because you seem more in line with them than with Islam. Okay. There's some very strange idea about what Islam says. <laughs> okay. I've heard that uh, many times. Many Christians. They say I'm not that surprised. I'm yeah, somebody, yeah, yeah, somebody in the chat. I don't. I'm sorry, James. I want to interject. So somebody in the chat suggesting wondered whether I attack uh, Judaism just as harshly as I attack Christianity or Islam. I have to point out that the vast majority of my scriptural attacks have been against the Hebrew Bible. So. The Jews actually get it worse than anybody else. You got it. And this one from Jacob Grosek says, 
Are in, is there any amount of psychologically satisfying ideas or examples of people whose lives were improved by Islam that would result in convincing evidence for Islam? No, because it's, it's fundamentally incorrect. If you adopt a belief, and you can adopt many different beliefs that can completely change your lives. I mean, you can adopt a new hobby that changes your life. You can adopt a new political ideology. The, the, the fact that your life changed for the adoption of some new obsession has nothing to do with whether that obsession is true. In this, in this case, we're talking about a collection of doctrines. Is the doctrine true? Now, if you live by this doctrine, or you think you do, but you're not really, you're living by some romanticized version of it, then you will pretend that your adoption of this belief will have it has, has a positive effect. But it doesn't mean that what the thing that you're pretending to believe is real or that it's factually accurate. You got it. And this one coming in from Tropes says, Oren, you keep calling out lies. This presupposes an objective truth. Where That's does... correct. And we have an objective truth. And I already said what it was at the beginning of the show. They say, well, you uh, predicted this question well. They say, where does truth come from in your worldview? What is your foundation for moral Once right it... or wrong? And truth or Once again, the truth is what the facts are, what we can show to be true, not whatever else we might assume or imagine beyond or instead of that. Now, as far as morality, I like to, to, to default back to Scott Clifton's classic video on uh, a treatise on morality, where we know that a given act is immoral or wrong if it, um, and I don't remember how he, how all of he, how he phrased it, but if it, it causes unnecessary harm or suffering or whatever, we understand objectively, everybody everywhere understands that we should not unnecessarily cause harm or suffering to some other person. We, we know that, that that's objectively immoral. So I don't understand why, why there's a difficulty in that. When we look at, when we have an understanding of what is moral and what is not, it's easy to take that standard that we all understand and then apply it to God, and especially the Abrahamic God comes out as evil. You got it. This one coming in from Zagros Ozkan strikes again and says Muji's Islamic utopia is equivalent to Smurf Village. I don't understand that. I, haven't seen I don't Smurfs either. So I hated long. the Smurfs, so I don't know. This one. Right. Comes... Okay, Muji, I can. Like I, the Smurfs? Yeah, I I can uh, answer because uh, Zagros, uh, I know him, and he always um, say that. Um, I have to say that. Um, uh, this because something hasn't happened doesn't mean that, for example, uh, the society we have today in Sweden would be, uh, you know, um, such a utopia for people hundreds of years ago. But today is it has happened. OK. And even today, uh, if you go to Af Africa and say that such a country exists, they might not believe you that such a system and country exists that, you know, uh, so for you. This is beyond maybe your imagination, okay? You are like a, a baby in the womb that you don't know beyond that womb there is a, another world, okay? So for you, maybe it is just imagination, but for me, and according to Quran, that's going to happen, and it's a promise from God that it's going to happen. One day we are going to live uh, in peace and love one another and share everything with each other, yes. This one from Samir Farsain says, Aaron, you heard the Hadith about the unbeliever lady whom Prophet Muhammad told his companions went to heaven for a starving dog she fed water in her shoe, right? I have not heard that, that Hadith, no. You got it in this one? I haven't heard that. From Azri Schizophrenia, says, Sir Aaron, you said there is no benefit in torture or punishment, but another way of looking at it is... The criminals wanted things that are bad. Therefore, Allah is only giving it to them. What is your feedback? Nobody wants, you know, well, you know, sane person wants to be, uh, you know, tortured. Certainly not mercilessly. Certainly not for eternity. You know, it, it, and yeah, you know, people will come up with justifications for the evil that they do. They'll know that it's evil because we don't. We know what is objectively evil, but people will often come up with excuses to justify it, and those justifications very often come with victim blaming or with religious righteousness that that person had it coming anyway. And people who have a personal God are especially bad at this. So when you have somebody to, to when you send somebody to prison for life and, and they, the option is the death penalty, 
They think they have a personal relationship with God. Their personal magic imaginary friend has forgiven them for whatever they've done. And their and their their version of God, their imaginary friend that they're calling God, understands why they were justified in whatever terrible thing that they did. And all they have to do is get get past the life sentence. If they can get the death penalty, then they'll be right away associated with God and they'll be in heaven where God has forgiven them and offered them great promises. So mm-hmm. that's why the death penalty is ineffective as a deterrent. It's a way of escaping the sentence of life imprisonment. You got it. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. M. Doug says, does Surah and Nisa 434 apply in heaven? Or can the wives hit back? I didn't understand. I could read it if you'd like. It says in the Quran that you can beat your wife, but I you know, can only it beat your say, wife no. so severely. Yeah, no, What's the question? The question is asking is whether the wife can hit back. Okay, the thing is that the Quran doesn't say that uh, hit your wife. Okay, it just says yes, it does. No, it doesn't say. It doesn't say. Yes, it me, does. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this, I, I tell you. Okay, Quran <laughs> says uh, I can bring for you uh, also. Um, you know. Uh, interpretation or be- better say translation that it says uh, you know leave them I can read for you and it doesn't make sense for uh, for me that uh, such a let me read for you such a God that says beat your wife in chapter six, 65 verse 6 says that let the woman who are undergoing a waiting period. This is a woman that you are have divorced, okay? Live in the same manner as you live yourself, in accordance with your means, and do not harass them with a view to making their lives a misery. So God tells me to treat a woman that I maybe hate, I just have divorced, and I have to live with her three months, okay? in such a way okay and then on another side god tells me to beat my wife that i'm going to leave with, with her no chapter 434 says that after the two steps leave her and chapter 435 says and in case you fear split between the two then send forth a judge from his family and a judge from her family in case they both are willing to act righteously. So it's about both of them, not one of them. I love that you're not addressing the question at all. The question There's a passage that, where the Quran does advocate physical discipline for no, wives. Absolutely does not. it also per- permit that the wife can hit back? The answer no, is no. no you no. know it's no. I no, know it's no. The audience knows that the no, answer is no. The answer is not, is never says to hit your wife. The Chapter answer two. is that the, no. the Quran does. Does no, no, definitely you. does say to, yes. that you can physically discipline your wife okay. and no. know she is not allowed that, to hit back. No, that's a backward Islam. Chapter 30, verse 21 says, And among his signs is this that he created for you mates from among yourself that you may find tranquility in them, and he has put love and mercy between you. So such a God who has put love and mercy between you allows you to beat your wife. Come on, man. Okay? So don't please... Uh, don't I'm take sorry it. that your book contradicts itself no, so it often. No, it doesn't contradict itself. Yes, it definitely it, does. It is, it, is, <laughs> it is wrong understanding. And okay. I said for you, chapter 3... Give me about a month. Give me okay. about a month to compile my, my notes for the book into a single unit. And then I can show you all of the different all of the different verses that contradict everything you just said, so that everything you said that it doesn't say, no, it actually it does. does say, including your own citation earlier okay. today. All right. This one so, coming in from <laughs> M. Duh. Oh, we got that one. J C X X X says, "Who will win the World Cup for debaters and the moderator?" I have no idea. What do you guys <laughs> think? I don't know. I don't watch. <laughs> I think okay. Argentina's in it, right? I don't know who is in the final. <laughs> I think it's today, right? I have no idea. That's sports ball. It must ball. be I don't tomorrow. It must be tomorrow. Oh, it's tomorrow. Thank you. You're right. It's France and Argentina. I uh, because okay. nobody believes me. Does it? I feel like I look like Messi. Do I look like Messi a little bit? The Argentina player. So I'm rooting for Argentina. Maybe I don't look like him. It's my imagination. But anyway, we look like brothers. Notion Slave says, why do you waste your time on some opponent 
let's see, making up complete opposite of mainstream and historical Islam. So I think that they're accusing you, Aaron, of making up uh, the complete opposite of mainstream hist historical Islam. Or well, I don't, I'm not talking about Muji? mainstream historical Islam. I'm talking about what the Quran actually says. I don't know and if they're... everything that I said that the Quran actually says, it actually does say. And I do have a third book coming out where I detail all of these things. So anybody in your chat that wants to pretend that it doesn't say that, you'll see where it exactly does say that over and over and over and over again. This Maybe I was even wrong. They say, could this have actually been for <laughs> Muti? Or I mean, Perfect Dawah. They say... Why do you waste your time on some opponent? Or what, I, what I'm trying to say is maybe this is meant for Aaron. Namely, they're maybe saying that Perfect Dawa is making up the complete opposite of mainstream historical. They didn't tell me. I don't know who it's for. This one coming in but from... He did, he did say that you can't follow the Quran and flog prisoners. And we've seen how many different Muslim countries do, in fact, do that. So okay. the, it would seem that the majority of Muslims don't follow the Quran, according to him. No, they don't do that because, uh, unfortunately... Uh, they just abuse, uh, you know, Islam and um, for their own power. Chapter 3, verse 7 says, It is he who has sent down to you, O Muhammad, the book. In it are verses that are precise. They are the foundation of the book and others unspecific. As for those whose heart is corrupted, they will follow that of it which is unspecific. So it means that if you don't understand it, you don't have to follow those unspecific verses like chapter 4, verse 33, desi desiring to create confusion and their own interpretation. And no one knows its true interpretation except Allah and those firm in knowledge. So if you want to uh, interpret Quranic verses, first of all, you have to be a Muslim. Because if you are not a Muslim, you will interpret it in the way that you want to create confusion. So No, but what if no. you don't want to create confusion? What if, what if you're like me and you want to make sure to remove all, the, all of the confusion that the Quran has written into it? We want to eliminate confusion and have a clear understanding. Then you're going to, yes. do, you're going to read multiple translations so that you, get, you, know, so that you have an idea of what they're all talking about. And then you're going to have a panel of people who understand Islam and who understand Arabic and can, can eliminate all that confusion for you and spend three and a half years studying that just so that some idiot in the, in the chat can tell me, oh, he has a wrong understanding of Islam. i got a better understanding of Islam than many Muslims do. Mm -hmm. this one Quran in. chapter, okay, let me fast say, Quran chapter 43, verse 5, strike is ignore. Shall we utterly ignore you because you are a wanton fault. Quran chapter 4 verse 101 strike is trouble. So there are many many verses in Quran that use the same word strike but it means something else. So just don't take one So whenever the Quran lies we find a contradiction to that lie okay. you say or that we just ignore that it said that and pretend that it said something else. No, Quran said that those firm in knowledge understand the true interpretation means that they don't contact God. Wait, but wait, wait. Put them, those those who fear them. knowledge? Firm. Those who are firm in knowledge. Firm. Dude, what's firm? I don't knowledge. understand what you're saying. Shut up, dog. What Allah is firm? Only not. Allah says only God and those firm in knowledge. Those who have knowledge, good knowledge, okay? Uh -huh. Firm in knowledge. Only they understand. How they understand, they don't call God, but they put the verses beside okay. each other and they understand it. They don't say, oh, it is contradiction. No, they say it is completion. Okay, so if you understand this it, explain, this verse explains. If you understand it, it, then you know it is a contradiction. No, and it doesn't matter how much no, poisoning no, no. of the okay. well okay. or okay. other I logical said, fallacies yeah. the Quran tries as to I use, said, we understand that those said, are logical fallacies. Yeah. As I said, and you contradictions. Have to be as I said, you have to be first, first Muslim to understand no, no, that no. God No, no, no. You, you God don't have to be Muslim because that's, that's one of the many okay. things you've gotten wrong tonight. Right. Yeah. You don't need to be a Muslim. You don't need to believe the nonsense to understand what the nonsense okay. says. All right. That, that's what, what Quran says, that you have to be a Muslim. I know. The Quran says a lot of things that are not true, yes, okay. but yeah. that's just one of them. You All don't right. have to be Muslim to understand what the hell the fairy tales are saying. Okay. To interpret it, you have to be a Muslim to interpret it. No, to to interpret it in such a way that you still believe it. Well, then you got to have something going wrong in your head. But you don't need to. You don't need to be a believer 
to understand what the Quran is saying. No, but the, to see through the Quran, not, you don't. You, it's better if you're not a believer okay. to understand the, with Quran. And no, and, and, and I would say that reading the Quran, especially if you're not, if you don't read it in the original Arabic, if you read it in a translation to your home language, and if you read it with a panel of people who understand it, then you're not going to be a Muslim anymore. Okay, I said what I said, yes. This one coming yeah. in from, do appreciate your question. Realist, realist, we don't have too much time left, folks. I'm going to try to read through as many as we can, but we're going to wrap up pretty shortly here. Realist, realist says, can Aaron provide empirical evidence for a neurological state of quote-unquote non-belief in gods that is distinguishable from belief in the non-existence of gods? Yes. This one coming in from, let's see. Shout out to James and the gang. DeFreak says... Also, please uh, tell Aaron to unmute me. All right. Well, gotcha. Uh, duly noted. Asri Schizophrenia. I think we got that. Let me jump over to these questions. Oh, wait. We did have a couple of other ones coming in. In the meantime, let me read just a couple of these. I had come in earlier. Thanks for your membership support, folks. And by the way, hey, if you haven't yet, if you enjoyed this debate, hit that like button. That really does mean a lot. We appreciate your support. Pakistansk Mango says, question to Perfect Dawa, is having a blue beard... Halal. Can you remind us what halal, H-A-L-A-L, means in Islam? Uh, I didn't understand. Blue beard? Blue beard. So like Aaron's dyed beard. I mean, I think that's dyed. But is it... No, uh... it's natural. It's always been this way. <laughs> ah, okay. Is, it, uh, uh, is halal a sin or is it a like unconventional or what does that no, mean? If it, doesn't, yeah. if it doesn't harm anybody, then it is not a sin. <laughs> okay. Okay. If it doesn't harm anybody, it doesn't. I don't think it harms anybody. Yeah, you got so, it. And there's a lo whole lot of halal that isn't halal. Then, Mr. Morpheus says Muslims collecting fake hadiths, Sahih ain't Sahih, and then says, "Is Dawa saying Muslims are liars?" I uh, don't say <clears throat> there are there. I mean, there are people who call themselves uh, they are liars, they are killers, they are murderers, and so on. So. Don't think that everybody is Muslim, as they, even Quran has a chapter, chapter Hippocrates, yeah, that uh, says that there, there were even people around Prophet Muhammad himself who were, uh, you know, saying that they are Muslims, they are believers, but they were lying. Yes, there are liars, but not all Muslims are liars, of course. Yeah. This one from no, Zachary? There there, you have a choice between deceivers and deceived. Mm -hmm. Zagros Ozcan says, why be a member of a Marxist M.E.K. terrorist group? All right. <laughs> Are you yeah, part of this terrorist group, Muji? Perfect. Uh, OK. OK. Uh, uh, James, uh, this is uh, something, uh, a trash that Iranian fascist regime, OK, has put this uh, in uh, countries, uh, Western countries as well, to follow, to destroy, to attack the biggest enemy of Iranian regime uh, organization, democratic organization that I follow, the thousands of European, uh, you know, parliamentarian, American senators just a few days ago, uh, many of the senators and the, uh, you know, congressmen have been supporting the, my organization. And this organization was in U.S. and Europe terrorist list. A court <laughs> Okay, a court in Europe, a court in London, and a court in Washington asked these countries to come with a single evidence that this group is a terrorist organization. They couldn't come with a single evidence in many, many years. And then in 2009, a court in London forced the UK to remove MEK from terrorist list. A court in Washington in 2012 forced US government to remove MEK from terrorist list because we are simply uh, fighting for freedom and we have uh, you know we have many supporters millions of supporters among even uh, you know uh, Donald Trump's uh, you know uh, what is it his deputy uh, what was his name um, uh, Mike Pence his foreign minister Mike Pompeo they support my organization how can they support a terrorist organization so this guy he just say nonsense words okay without any uh, fact because my organization is the biggest enemy of iranian fascist regime that's why of course there will be a lot of you know they try to demonize my organization which they have done it in many but uh, fortunately 
uh, those clouds are going away. They have gone, you know, through the courts. If you have the evidence, you should come to Washington court. You should come to the London court, okay? Not that uh, all these countries, not a single, uh, you know, evidence. Yes. This one from Yashua to King says, Perfect Dawah, do you pay zakat or support financially any Sunni mosque or organization? If so, then you support the true Sunni Islam that you don't like. No, I'm not uh, I'm Sunni. I'm not Shia. I believe in, uh, you know, whatever is right. I believe in Christianity, whatever is right in Christianity, in Judaism. In oh, I didn't realize Islam. you believe in whatever is right. I didn't know yes. you were an atheist. No, no, no. I believe in everything is right. OK, so I'm not a Sunni. I'm not a Shia. And I, yes, I support my organization. OK, because I believe that they are doing a great job to bring the biggest enemy of mankind in uh, Iran. So I'm supporting them. I Today I was in a demonstration in minus uh, five. <laughs> but so I've been fighting this regime 43 years. And I if I get some money, I help it. Uh, I give it to my organization because I believe that that goes the best way. Then these masks that uh, a, a backward mullah is just using that uh, to fool people. You're talking so softly, I can barely hear you. But this one coming in from Balthazar228 says, With Islam, as it was written in 700, being purported to be true, does this qualify as an ancient day debate? It I never gets get... old. It has a shelf life that lasts for eternity. M. Doug says, How can Allah be infinitely just and infinitely merciful at the same time? Uh, I didn't understand what he meant. I think they mean, people. like, if Allah is infinitely merciful, then why the... My guess is they're maybe uh, talking well, about... Well, the, the obvious contradiction is the existence of hell as a concept. That's, I think, what they were getting at. That's what I was going to guess. We, we, we have been uh, discussing that. Uh, Allah is also just. So he's not going to allow that... Uh, uh, as he says, okay? And then another place he says that... Didn't you know that Allah, uh, the entire universe belongs to Allah and he can forgive or punish whomever he wills. So we don't know how long he keep them and who he, he will punish and so on. So this is up to him and this is we will know that after this life. We, we don't know that today. OK, so he he decide and I'm not going to interfere in that. This one from yes. Mojo says, I have a short question. R and Ra, why does the Quran say we and refer Allah mostly as being the Quran is talking about? Did angels talk the, the, the Quran is is written in Queen's English where they where the the the, uh, the the God refers to themselves in the plural. We are not amused. Gotcha. And this one coming in from Notion Slave says unironically the corrupt person interpreting quranic verses corruptly and ignoring every single islamic scholar is this perfect quote-unquote dawah guy okay uh, that's a uh, actually uh, not every it's a lie as well that every uh, you know scholar interpreted in that way it's a big lie because there are scholars especially today there are scholars who are coming out and <clears throat> interpret it differently and go against the mainstream who have been, uh, unfortunately, a bunch of businessmen whose uh, job was selling God and the quantity was important, not the quality of the product they sell. So, And they uh, were afraid to go against the mainstream because they would lose their job, perhaps. So don't please uh, say that every you know, scholars. No, there are scholars today that they go against such an interpretation. All right. This one coming in from Zagros mm. Ozcan strikes again. He says, MEK's own website says this is the group that they allege to be a terrorist group that they say you're a part of. They say says that they are Marxist Muslims. Also, all Iranians know that MEK killed its own members who wanted to leave and civilians as well. Perfect Dawah. 
Okay, that's, uh, I said that if he had such a, uh, evidences, he should come to Washington court. I can give you the date. It was 2012 that Washington court uh, didn't get uh, a single evidence from uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was uh, uh, spring uh, 2012 that uh, Washington court wrote a letter to Hillary Clinton and said that we gave you 180 days to come with a single evidence to the court, but you disappear 600 days. So give, we give you time until uh, end of uh, October 2012. If you don't come with a single evidence, we will remove it ourselves. And Hillary Clinton wrote a letter to the court and said, that, oh, I'm busy, I have this, I have that, I cannot, you know. So, uh, uh, and then she waited, waited, because they were appeasing Iranian fascist regime. So she waited, waited. At the last day, she removed MEK from terrorist list because she didn't have a single evidence to come to the court. So Azri, if you ha or uh, Zagros, if you had a single evidence, you, an Iranian fascist regime, you should come to the court and present those evidences. Even there was a London court as well, okay? So another thing is that about Marxist, uh, you know, and such a things. If we believe in equality, it doesn't mean that we are Marxist, okay? We believe in equality, and yes, the enemies, they call us Marxist Islamists, okay? But we believe in equality, and that's in Quran, that one day the entire planet will live equal, okay? You got it. With that... Want to keep our promise to our speakers. They're very busy. We want to get him out of here on time. Want to say a huge thank you to both Perfect Dawa and RN Raw. It's been a true pleasure to have you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. I just uh, remind once again, I go live right now. And for those who would like to contact me every Saturday, I go live as well. So please join me and we continue to talk there. And Aaron, I will contact you for further you know, discussion if uh, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Aaron. Take care. And James, thank you for this opportunity. Take thank care. You. Thank you. Bye -bye. My pleasure. I'll be Bye -bye. back in just a moment, folks, with a quick post credit scene letting you know about upcoming debates. So stick around for that. And thanks for your support, folks. If you haven't yet, hit that like button. We're already up to 323. Appreciate that support. And with that, I'll be back in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, thrilled to have you here. I am going to pull up on screen in just a moment as I am opening Zoom back up. I want to say we appreciate you being here. It's always a true pleasure, my dear friends, whether you be Muslim, atheist, Christian, you name it, we are glad that you are here. And so, my dear friends, I've got to tell you a couple of things in particular. Let me just readjust here. Da -da -da. If it's your first time, 
My name is James Coons. I'm the host here at Modern Day Debate, and I want to say we do appreciate you being here no matter what walk of life you're from, whether you be Christian, atheist, you name it. want to say hello to you there in the old chat, as well as if you're able to chat, because we put subscribers only mode on, just to remind you that we have future debates coming up, and want to say thank you for subscribing. For, for real. So I want to say, I see you there in the old live chat. Travis Pratt, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being a subscriber. Dark Matter, appreciate that. Akil, thanks for coming by. Thanks for being a subscriber. As well as Kia Star 67 thanks for being with us and thanks for subscribing. Thanks for your support, folks. Our goal here is to provide a neutral platform so that everybody can make their case on a level playing field. That's our vision, and that's what we are absolutely determined to do as we continue expanding. We are thrilled, you guys. We just hit 88,000 subscribers yesterday, which is huge, and we want to say thank you for subscribing, including Jacques Palamir, let me know if I'm pronouncing it right. Thanks for subscribing. Banksy Style Live, thanks for being a subscriber. Tropes, thanks for being a subscriber. Living Room Speakers, longtime viewer, thanks for being a subscriber. And Dark Matter, thanks for subscribing. That support means more than you know, as we are absolutely determined. Believe me, join us while we are small, because our vision is to continue to grow, and our story is just beginning. We are just a baby channel compared to where we are going, my dear friends. So join us while we're young and small as we have big aspirations, as it's important to us. It fits, namely the vision that I just described of providing a level playing field for everybody to make their case fits with our values. And our values are, in particular, one, we've already said it, we want things to be fair for people. We want to give them their fair shot no matter what walk of life they're from. Also, we are willing to cover the topics and host the individuals that might be controversial, that aren't allowed in other places, whether it be mainstream news that doesn't allow it, or in a lot of cases you don't hear both sides because it's a channel that only has one side. We don't think there's anything wrong with that. However, our goal is we want to provide, you could say, even the most controversial of people and ideas, a platform as we truly want to tolerate everybody and giving them their fair chance. And some people might say, well, James, wait a minute. I, let's not go too far. I mean, you know, if you let the Muslims or the atheists or the Christians or the politically far left or the politically far right, if you let those people on, it might be dangerous. They're going to spread their ideology that might be dangerous or harmful. And that's where our third value comes in, in particular competition. We believe there is a survival of the fittest ideas, namely the best ideas will survive through these competitions, through these, you could say, tournaments of debates we believe that the cream will rise to the top that the best arguments will win out let the chips fall where they may let a thousand flowers bloom the best ideas will win out and that's the value that's the beauty of competition being a value is a lot of people think like oh, i don't know it's bad that there's competition well is it bad i mean think about it if you think that an idea or a view is harmful are you just going to be like, well, I don't want to compete against that harmful idea because, you know, I don't want to be competitive. I want to be passive. The idea is if you really think, one, that you believe that your position is actually the best for people, then why would you not try to be more persuasive? Because that's all what we really mean when we say competition is good in debates is you just want to be more persuasive. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. A lot of times people try to make it seem like a bad word or a bad thing. Like, oh, you're bad if you want to win a debate. It's like, I'm bad because I might think that some view is harmful out there and I want to be more persuasive in showing people that that view is harmful. I actually think that's pretty reasonable. I actually think that's morally responsible and maybe even morally obligatory because shouldn't it be the case that if there are these harmful ideologies out there, we have to rise up and defeat them through debate because otherwise people go underground and you think like oh they'll just go away no no no. i don't think they do i think they just go underground underground and they scheme and then eventually you have some people that run into them one day and they're not prepared they're caught with their pants down because they don't know what the arguments are from these allegedly dangerous groups and so they can't defeat them they're actually like oh like a deer in headlights they don't know what to say because they've never heard or been exposed to their stuff that's the beauty of a debate channel that allows controversial ideas is people are able to see the refutations of these ideas that they maybe normally wouldn't have because a lot of channels try to push ideas or ideologies underground i don't think it works i don't think it's a sustainable strategy when at least in the united states and 
a lot elsewhere around the world, people have the freedom still to say what they want. They're not going to get arrested if they try to speak to you in person about it or whatever it is. So you have to be prepared. But I want to say thank you to more people in the old live chat. Thanks for your support. Megan Satanis, glad to have you back. Free Naturalist, thanks for all your support of the channel. Thanks for being a subscriber as well. Industrial Nerd says, when and what is the next debate? Glad you asked. Next Monday, T-Jump and Hake of the Hake Report debate whether or not the Great Reset is real. You don't want to miss that one. It's going to be a juicy one, a political one. That'll be fun. We can mix it up. We haven't done that topic in a long time. We've got to take it easy. We've got a lot of Muslim debates recently, so we're going to give it a little break. We love these debates. They're interesting. They're important. But it's true. Sometimes it's like, wow, we've had a lot of those, so we're going to mix it up. We're probably going to shoot for some more creation evolution debates coming up. We've also, let me look at the schedule. I'm currently working on setting up one on Is Diversity Good with Hunter Avalone and Kai from Kai Clips, the YouTube channel, as well as Can We Trust NASA between Mark Reed and Nathan Thompson. That's a work in progress. There's no date for that, but both debaters, or at least Mark Reed, has expressed interest. I think I can, I can persuade Nathan. Trust me. But this one coming in from, oh, and in terms of other future debates, we might have a, a, a debate on... A-B-O-R-T-I-O-N. That might happen, a tag team at the end of the month, as well as a debate on veganism, which we haven't done in like years. Isn't that crazy? It's been a long time. Daniel Hakikachu, I've reached out to about a particular debate. That one is in the works. I've got to run it by his potential opponent, JF. So we've got a lot of juicy debates that we're working on setting up. Thanks for being a subscriber. Said Informatique, as well as Realist, realist, thanks for being a subscriber. Thanks for your support. 1337 Drummer Nate. Appreciate you being a subscriber for real. And amazing. We appreciate all of your support, folks. Not just in the way of subscribing, although that is appreciated, of course. But also, hey, a lot of people, I check on the stats behind these videos oftentimes, and one of the main ways that we grow is through people sharing. So we want to say thank you to all of you who have already shared these videos. If you believe in the vision, you're like, hey, I like that. I identify with that. That's something I believe in, namely providing a neutral platform so that everybody can make their case on a level playing field. And if you agree with our values, namely, we want things to be fair because that's more official. But second of all, you might say, I also agree the idea of allowing controversial topics or figures. That's our second value. You could say freedom. People can say, what they want. But third, you might say, oh, in competition as well. Those are our three main values. Those are what we are convinced are going to make a positive impact in YouTube. In particular, we believe that YouTube deserves a better class of debate channel. And we're going to give it to them here at Modern Day Debate. So we want to say thank you for all of your support. And if you agree with that vision and those values, you can click that share button, whether you're listening via mobile right now or if you are listening via computer. If you click on the share button, you can share it, whether it be Discord groups that you might be a part of. You can share it through another example would be if you're in a Twitter group, like a, a thread where you talk to people. I am. We share jokes with each other. We share other weird stuff. You could share it in a group like that. You could share it. You could post it on a Facebook page that likes these topics. That really does help. So we do appreciate all the people who do share. It means a lot, seriously, and it really does make a difference. Because that third party, you could say attestation of saying like, hey, no, like, moderate debate is actually good. It's fun. That really does go a long way. Because if I share it somewhere, they're like, well, James, you run modern day debate. Like, it doesn't have as much credibility. But if it's a third party, someone neutral, like a bystander who's like, no, like actually I enjoy this channel. It's pretty cool. That really does go a long way. So we appreciate your guys' support. Mr. Creenan, thanks for coming by. I see you there. Appreciate your support. Thanks for being a subscriber. Says, let's see. Says, I could say it's the more sensational topics clickbait, but I do like the unpopular opinions debate category. Appreciate that feedback. Thanks so much, Mr. Creenan. As well as... TGFKA Trichter, thanks for coming by. Thanks for being a subscriber. Thelron Smith, thanks for all of your support. As well as Lieutenant Gregory Stevens says, I was busy arresting lewd and lascivious individuals. Well, we appreciate your service and we appreciate you being here in the old live chat. Thanks for being a subscriber. And amazing. V Thomas, thanks for your support. We appreciate that. Thanks for subscribing. 
and JJ the Trap Extraordinaire. Thanks for being a subscriber. Seriously, that means a lot. And they said, Adam, it is someone that I was going to set up. So I saw you recommending. You were saying, Adam, he is a debater. It says, Adam Green versus Christianity. I am open to hosting that. So believe me totally open to it and i'm going to reach out to adam green it's just been a matter of finding him a good opponent so i am working on that and thanks for your feedback as well as joe the toe thanks for coming by appreciate you how wow am i saying it right let me know thanks for being here appreciate you subscribing it means a lot my dear friends we are excited about the future big stuff coming up and Slicey Slicer says, can I have an extra special? Amazing. Yes, you can. It's going to be amazing. Kilo Alpha Tango says, amazing. I couldn't agree more. Thanks for being a subscriber. Appreciate it. Francis Capel says, love modern day debate. Always listening. Thanks so much, Francis. That means more than you know. Appreciate that. It's going to be amazing. We got a big, bright future, and we want to say thank you guys for all of your support. I love you guys. Seriously, you guys make this fun. Appreciate all of your support. Thanks for being a subscriber, Tanky. And thanks for your kind words. Mr. Creenan says, looking forward to a winter's to a winter of good modern day debate shows. Thanks, James. Thanks so much. That really does mean a lot, and we're working on that. We we've been kind of going a little bit slow lately. We have been doing, you could say fewer debates the last few weeks that's just because the conference took a ton of time and energy so i've had to catch up with like personal life grading and all that so we will though be starting to go like at a higher pace in january it's just a matter of like i said that conference that we had which if you haven't seen the videos from our conference recently we did our own modern day debate debate con that's our conference that we do and it was huge it's a debate conference where we have both political and religion debates and it was monstrous if you haven't seen it rn was in one of the debates that was against Daniel Hakikachu, a Muslim fellow. That was a great debate. Seriously, one of our best, as well as Matt Delonte against Kenny Bomer, a Muslim debater as well. If you haven't seen those debates, check them out, folks. They're awesome. They're just right here on the channel. And Industrial Nerd says, you got a PayPal asking for the other guy. My PayPal email is moderndaydebate at gmail.com. So I appreciate you asking. Let's see, Industrial, I'll put that modern day debate. And that's also my email where you can reach me at. So do appreciate that. All of your support means a ton, folks. Thanks for all those shares. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't hit that like yet, we do appreciate that. Hit that on the like or hit that like button on the way out and want to say thanks for all of your love. Seriously, I love you guys. You guys make this fun. I hope you have a great rest of your day or night, depending on what part of the world you're from. And keep sifting out the reasonable from the unreasonable. We'll see you at the next debate, which is this coming Monday. Thanks, everybody.